go until um Okay, but it looks like they do hear us. Uh, this says my, my, I've got no audio yes. level, but as long as they hear us. So uh, as I was saying, uh, that we still have some of the test graphics, obviously, um, on there. Uh, we do we do have uh, breaking news graphics that are the, the live graphics that we had intended, but this is just... Um, uh, this is, was not the show we had intended. Uh, now, uh, this this program was supposed to air first tomorrow, and uh, we we're going to be discussing uh, commentary on various political and social media issues. And uh, we were also going to be covering yes. breaking news. And then, of course, some breaking news happened today, and we decided that um, we were going to cover it. So uh, that is what we are doing here. Now, um, I don't know uh, a whole heck of a lot about it. Uh, what I do know so far is that six officers, at least six officers are shot in Philadelphia. And so um, Angsgar, I was hoping, or Ansgar, excuse me, I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about it. Yes. Uh, first of all, by the way, um, my my camera seems to be missing in the uh, yes in the uh, layout. But yes, I uh, will work okay. on that. But while you do that, yeah, we'll work on that. Okay. So apparently, uh, officers went to go. It was uh, narcotics officers went to go serve a warrant. Um, during that uh, um, altercation, um, at some point, uh, shots rang out. Six officers were were injured. Um, uh, the news that I have that I've been able to get a hold of says that none of the injuries are life threatening. Um, uh, however, the situation isn't uh, resolved. Um, it's been almost three hours with shots continually ringing out, and the last uh, the last update is that there are still two officers trapped in the home with the gunman. Now, were there was there anyone else in the in the home at that time? Did anyone else get out? Do we do we know that? Oh. Yes, there were there were um, several residents who um, fled the home um, the moment that there was a shooting, and um, they have been interviewed by the police. They've been interviewed by uh, the press. Um, they they actually have commended the officers and thanked them for saving their lives. They said at every point that the officers, um, in this situation at least, were um, nothing but concerned for the. Um, you know, the civilian safety. And so all of them have gotten out completely unharmed. Apparently some bullets have made its way through the, uh, have made their way through the streets from the home, mm -hmm. but none of those wild bullets have hit any of the bystanders or anything like that. All right. And it's, it's still an active situation. So there's, there's, there, there is there still, there's still shots being exchanged. Yes, there are still shots being exchanged right now. The uh, um, as I'm watching on my uh, feed, um, the um, the SWAT team are positioning. Uh, we don't know what they're doing, obviously, because they're not going to share their tactics over <laughs> the media. <laughs> but uh, right now, the uh, yeah, yeah, that would be not intelligent. But the SWAT team are uh, repositioning vehicles, and they want to get this resolved before nightfall because. As, as far as they're concerned, once night comes, it creates a much worse tactical situation. All right. Now, speaking of, speaking of uh, streaming uh, their tactics, uh, was some of this live streamed? Yes, yes. Um, apparently, the shooter was live streaming some of this to social media. Um at some point, the stream cut out. I'm not sure if um, I haven't gone to track down the stream because the last thing I want to do is promote this shooter's live stream. But uh, yes, the shooter um, actually live streamed uh, whatever was going on. I'm assuming from his phone or something like that. And um, uh, at some point, that stream was cut off. I don't know if it was by uh, the police. You know, they they've done that kind of thing before, or if he just decided to turn it off. But yes, he was he was live streaming this the the uh, gunfight. Okay. Um, all right. So I we we had a request for a recap, and um, what what we're gonna do is. Uh, we're going to actually hold up uh, multiple sources that Ansgar and I are going to uh, be going over. We have um, actually multiple monitors here and uh, several computers, and we're going to be going over 
the uh, various sources on this incident and uh, we're going to try to sort of see what's going on and how everyone's doing. As of this moment, um, there are no deaths, and, and I think it's, it's hopeful that there aren't going to be any. There are six officers shot in Philadelphia and wounded. Uh, two more are currently trapped inside a house, or inside the house where the shootout erupted, and there's a standoff between uh, officers and a uh, suspect. They were serving a warrant on a drug. Was it a drug violation of some kind? Yes, that's what it seems like, uh, because it was um, narcotics officers. Okay, and, and now SWAT team, I guess, is there. And um, on top of all yes, of that... Yes, they've been there for a while. Okay. Yeah, they've been there for a while, but they're just now starting to reposition. Okay, and... Um... This is, again, this is, you know, uh, 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 breaking news and commentary and trying to, I think, uh, give people an accurate story of what's going on was something that uh, we here uh, hoped to do, and we were going to really be prepared to start doing that tomorrow. We're doing this a day early, and um, so it's, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're still, I guess, a little bit in the beta. We're having... Um, a little streaming troubles, I think, but uh, overall we're doing all right. Ansgar's image, I actually see it on, on my end, but the frame seems to have, have locked up, and so I'm going to try to fix that so you can all see him. But uh, in the meantime, <laughs> we're going to, yeah, so it's just the, the disembodied voice right now. We're going to try to uh, figure out a bit more about what's going on, and I think so we've got um, CNN. Uh, there's a very nice... Um, image of CNN's, uh, uh, what, uh, <laughs> their advertising on, on the, on the center screen there. We may, we may try to scroll through that. Uh, that's an interesting point about, so he, he live streamed it. I, I think I would like to find out a bit more about that live stream and know, uh, and find out what we know about it. Uh, I, I think you're right there. I can go do some searching if you want me to. Uh, let's do that, and let's see if anybody else um, on the live chat um, is uh, uh, has any questions, or if there's anything else that they know about it. In the meantime, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something absolutely atrocious, which is I'm also gonna check Fox News uh, on this, and uh, I, one of the reasons I like I like to try to get uh, as good. Um, as much information from as many sources as possible. And I do think that, uh, you know, Fox News is, is they're certainly not my go-to source on um, most things, but it is nice to see right. uh, what it is that they have to say. So let me... Um... Okay, the police did, by the way, shut down the live stream. They oh. were the ones that shut it down. They terminated it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now, do you know was that was that from his phone or was he was he doing that from? Um, uh... Uh, right now, all it says is let's see. Um, uh, the suspect in the wounded six officers live streaming the ongoing gun battle um, uh, was live streaming some of the shootout. Um, yeah, they haven't said exactly what. I'm still tracking that down all right let's um see if we can get uh now we got i'm gonna put up uh, so he streamed it to facebook it seems like to um wow okay um uh, yeah. yeah that's a that's an interesting okay let me um Try to get. I've I've got Fox News, and we're gonna bring them up. It looks like I have a still image. All right. Um. Uh, uh, you can send that to me, and I can I can get that up here. What's what's that an image of? This is an image. Um. Uh. Because the as as you can imagine, the stream has been taken down, so it's almost impossible to even see. But this is a image from what he was live streaming. Oh. Okay. Um. Yeah. Why don't if you can. Um. It's up to you if you want to put it up. Yeah, I'm not sure if I if I want to put it up 
but I, I would at a minimum like to see uh, what it is. And then in the, go. in the meantime, I would also like to see uh, what uh, Reuters or anyone else has to, to say about this. Um, like I said, we are we're still this is this is a day early and we're we're not entirely prepared to start this um yeah, right off the bat. This, is a, new, worth this a... is a new format, so <laughs> yeah. Um Well what I wanna what I what I'm curious about though is do you think that the ability to live stream something like this, the ability to go live and, and glorify yourself in such a way is a factor in these kinds of things? Well, I think that's a good question. I think, um, well, he was live streaming, so clearly he thought something was going to happen. Um, I, I'd like to know uh, the details of how and when he started streaming relative to um, when the warrant was actually mm -hmm. being served, because ostensibly, I, I mean, you know the the warrant. You would think they would, um, uh, you know, they're they're. I would assume it would be a, a no knock warrant. They just come in and, and and burst into the house. So I have no idea how he actually starts uh, streaming that. Now, yeah, it, once he's streamed it, you obviously don't want to make him more famous for uh, what's going on and for um, uh, what he's doing. So I think there is there is some point to not uh, showing any of the stream and not engaging on that. But on the, um, uh, well, yeah, so I, I think that's in general, but I don't know that it necessarily caused anything. I don't know, what, what are your thoughts? Well, we know that radicalization um, is strongly tied to, um, you know, is definitely strongly tied to, uh, um, you know, shootings in general, um, violence in general. And so I really do wonder if um, the ease of which one can feel that they have... Uh, uh, glorified themselves, the ease of which, you know, um, to have that kind of reach will, um, will make it, I don't know, almost like the decision easier for someone who's looking for that kind of thing. That's a fair point. Um, I think he, I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, I, I would assume, and this is just pure speculation, we don't know much, but I would assume he probably sees himself as a victim, you know, uh, he's a victim of the system of the, of the man of, of whatever. And so he wants to stream, mm -hmm. Hey, these cops are busting into my house. Look what's happening. Um, I, I, I do think in, I, I mean, he's, I don't think he's an extremist. So I, I think, you know, you, you were talking about extremism. I, 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 I don't think he's yeah. an extremist, but I think, it does apply in, in very much the same way. I don't think he's looking to, to send a message per se. Um, but I, not a necessarily. Well, I mean, it's possible. Um, it could be a political message, but I wouldn't think that it would necessarily be tied to a violent extremist view, but one can ha take a violent extremist side of a rather normal political view. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, um, there's, 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 I mean, um, to, pardon my French, but you know, um, there's a reason and, uh, uh, people right now in a lot of ways feel kind of, you know, fuck the police with the bad things going on. And so even this could simply be a more radicalized version of that thought process. Um, I think that's a fair point. Um, and now the warrant, do you know if the warrant was in, included an arrest or was it just for like search and seizure? I mean, it was a drug warrant. I know, I know we know that. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I wonder if, uh, and usually I, in my experience, they try to serve warrants as early as possible. Uh, so now this must have not been served until the, the late afternoon. Uh, in part to to try to ca try to catch people, 
you know, before they either head off to work or, um, and also to, to avoid something like this going off into the night. So I'm, I'm curious, it may have been like an, an emergency warrant or, or, you know, it's odd for them. Usually they warrants are done first thing in the morning. They go through a whole thing of warrants, try to be done by 11 uh, AM and, and leave it at that. Unless, unless this police department's doing something different than, than how I understand things usually to be done. Well, in this case, what, what happened, um, as far as I was, um, uh, reading and listening to, uh, some of the news is they had actually cased the place out, uh, for at least a couple days, um, to make sure that the person that they wanted was going to be home when they got there. So in, in that kind of a situation, um, where they're actually casing and making sure and we're talking about several officers going to do uh to make you know to uh, to serve this warrant this sounds like they they were prepared for uh potential violence or pushback they don't typically you know burst in your door with several officers or even knock with a bunch of officers when it's when it's just a hey we need you to go to court or we need you to testify kind of warrant yeah, it yeah, but it sounds to me like this may have been an arrest warrant. Yeah, it was. It was definitely. A, well, it was. Just, so at a minimum, it must have been a search and seizure. And the, the question was, was, was it an arrest warrant? Warrant. And the other question is, of course, how much warning yeah. did he have? Um, all right. So again, this is our, our first time. We we have a show planned for tomorrow. Tomorrow is still, and we still have it. Tomorrow is our official start. We're going to be using uh, legit and legal graphics mm -hmm. tomorrow. At least that's the idea. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. Wouldn't that wouldn't that be a, a bonus? Um, let's try not to get demonetized on our first day out by by and get a get a copyright um, deal against us. But. Um, now the other thing is, I'm curious if um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try talking to because one of the things was I was actually testing the interface, and we've got the mm -hmm. the um, CNN up on the interface, and then CNN just came up blinking, and I was just like, oh, breaking news! You know, gee, as of tomorrow, we're going to be covering that, and I was like, well, we could do something really <laughs> right. to try to cover it now, um, so. Um, we are going to, now somebody here said something, you know, we live in a privatized police state in this country. I'd really like to understand a bit more about what he means by that. I've heard that opinion before, and I think that's a, a it's a worthwhile opinion to discuss, <sighs> but, um, I, I'm curious. Who, I, I mean, definitely, I, I don't know about privatized. I mean, it seems it seems weird to call it privatized, though. Though I will say that there is a certain amount of um, adversarialness that I see in police work these days. If that makes sense, um, that does. Uh, yes. Just as an example, um, uh, in the LA, in the LA area, uh, all the cars used to even say to protect and serve. Um, and uh, when I was when I was growing up, I was always told that police are supposed to be, you know, public servants. That's what their job is. But it seems more and more, and it was probably already like this to a degree, that the enforcement, law enforcement, seems to be their primary goal, not necessarily uh, protecting and serving. However we do have to remark that according to the people that were in the house, that is exactly what these officers did was put their lives in the line for the civilians that were there. So, and I think, yeah. And that's one know, of the things it's, you, it's, it's hard to make such a blanket. Yeah. No, that's one of the things Go that you, you had pointed out uh, immediately, even before this question had been asked and, and, you know, you had said, well, Hey, look, you know, this is what we're being told is that the people were very thankful for the way that the police officers got them out and six officers shot. Um, <laughs> that doesn't usually happen on a warrant. So it seems to me that there were some sort of extenuating circumstances. And it may be that he no. was, he was taking, <laughs> yeah, it may be that he was taking shots at them while, um, uh, it may be that he was taking shots at them while they were trying to get 
people into cover. I mean, that's that's when I when I see six officers shot, that's usually the thing I think of is they weren't preoccupied with their own safety mm-hmm. or necessarily getting him because if they were, he'd be dead by now and there'd be one, <laughs> two officers shot most. Um, the the well, this this does bring up this gets into two things that I would love to discuss at some point. I'm well, um, some some updates. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say some updates. Um, David uh, McInnes uh, also brought this up. Uh, the police have been trying to get the public to back off, and no one will, which means there's a lot of bystanders still in the line of fire at this moment. And one of the updates is that one of the two officers, oh, sorry, one of the six officers that's been shot, they are reporting a head wound. So we do have one head wound, one leg wound, and the rest of the wounds we're unsure of. All right. Okay. So the first thing is, and that's one of the things where you would never want to, um, you know, uh, sort of, you know, we're doing this and, and you have to be a little careful when you're, when you're going live. Uh, you have to be a little careful about, you know, trying not to make the situation mm-hmm. worse. Um, obviously, I don't think we're having any impact on the situation, but we wouldn't want anyone to be getting any closer. In fact, let the police officers do their job. I want to discuss that, that and how that pertains to, because I actually have a, a, a friend, um, an old high school friend of mine is on the Boston Police Department, and he was one of the people who was tasked with finding the um, Boston Marathon bomber. And I'd like to discuss that because there were similar charges in in that incident uh, about the police. And so I would like to discuss that in a minute, but I'd also like to sort of finish about... Um, so uh, uh, it's it's no name in the chat, and one of the things that he is discussing is, uh, well, I, well, I'm not entirely. So he had brought up um, the privatization of the police force, which I'm I'm very concerned about the privatization of a lot of things. We have as as future topics already on the schedule for this mm-hmm. show, um, healthcare, um, and possibly the privatization of the military, and a few other interesting topics. But uh, with the police force and the, and the prisons, I'm against the privatization of, of prisons. Uh, we've had that discussion before that I think is going to be one we're going to talk yes. about on this show. It's, it's, it's a serious problem. I was on non-sec when, when we had that discussion. I think that's a very serious problem. The other thing is, um, okay, I'm going to have to, uh, just because I'm getting back some notes on this. The other thing is that... I think there's a lot of, there is some, unfortunately, privatization of the penal system in as much as, you know, the the police, it's some of it's small potatoes. We all know, look, you're more likely to get a speeding ticket at the end of the month. Why? Because they want to make quotas on how many speeding tickets they, they issue. Part of that is to really try to do law enforcement, but really part of that is to try to bring in more revenue. When um, they seize cars, they seize, uh, right. um, things at a they often will seize as much as that i had a friend of mine who got pulled over um because his car had been used in a crime he lent his car to a friend used the car in a crime he gets pulled over uh he had marijuana in the car they seized the car this was in california he never got the car back they sold it at auction um and it, it was one of those things it, it wasn't even it had nothing civil to asset do with forfeiture it. And that's that's a, a, a decent revenue stream for them. So yeah. I don't know if that's what he was talking Civil about. Civil asset forfeiture. He also had mentioned yeah. um, something else that kind of like. Well, what he's saying is is I think with the prison. Oh. Yeah, no, go, go, go. Let's see, uh, justice system to take away people's freedom for. Yeah, so he's talking about um, I think because the and I see I think what I, I see what he's saying, uh, or, or or she I'm not sure it's no name. Um, <laughs> when you have a system where the um, prisons have a a lobby right because they do they they have a lobby group um who lobby for stronger sentencing and who lobby for stronger um you know longer sentences when you have that going on then the justice system at the very least is being um influenced and lobbied in a in, in, in a privatization way so while I'm not yet willing to say that the police are privatized, there is certainly a corruptive element of the privatization of justice that's going on, for sure. 
Yeah, I, 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 I think that's a fair point. The other, the other thing is, so when it comes to police officers keeping people back, uh, this is this is a trigger for me, and here's why. I, I remember actually being asked to, to be on a show, and I, I wasn't able to do it, but on how uh, the abuses by the uh, Boston Police Department during the uh, Boston Marathon bombing. I live uh, just outside of Worcester, which is, if you're lucky, about 45, half an hour, 45 minutes from Boston. I live in Massachusetts, lived there all my life. I have family that has run the marathon uh, repeatedly. I have friends in the marathon every single year. I, I, I know this well. Uh, and I remember the bombing like it was yesterday. And one of the interesting mm -hmm. things about this is um, a, a lot of uh, radio shows uh, and commentary, especially in the South, would say uh, what had happened was the police, when they had narrowed the suspects down to just one or two towns, uh, they asked everybody in those towns to stay indoors at basically all costs. And there were a few people, not many, but a few who just basically said, hey, this is a free country. I, I can go out if I want to. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out. And they were reasonably limited in what they could do because technically you could go out. I think in one or two cases, they did either arrest someone or take the. But there is a valid point there. Now, there was some concerns by people outside of Massachusetts. I didn't hear this concern from anybody in Massachusetts. I was phenomenally proud of my police department that day. Um, there were concerns uh, from people that the police department was overstepping mm -hmm, its mm -hmm. bounds in trying to get these guys. Now, if you don't remember what the bombing was, was these two brothers who um, were basically going to commit jihad and they had detonated an explosive uh, killing three, if I recall, wounding, uh, I think, 16 or more at the uh, finish line to the uh, Boston uh, Marathon, which I've been at that finish line before. I, I, I know that area. Um, I, now, that was actually one Wasn't of the first Wasn't it multiple years. explosive devices, not just one? Um, I, they, they had multiple ones. I think one of them didn't go off. It's actually been a little while. I only remember the one that went off. Um and I remember because it killed a, 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 okay. a young girl. Um, I mean, there, it killed three people and wounded. It was lucky it didn't kill uh, any more than that. Uh -huh. What they did have, there were multiple explosions later. Um, there were a lot of explosions later. What they did was they tied on um, explosive vests and they uh, uh, decided to, they went and they shot a, a uh, police officer. I think if I remember, they may have killed an MIT uh, uh, campus security guard when they uh, tried to carjack someone. I think they successfully carjacked him now, if I remember. It's been a little while. Then they um, uh, they also they shot an officer. This gets back into some of these wounds. They shot an officer. The officer was hit in the leg, but the um, he was hit in the artery in the leg, and that is a life-threatening wound. That's as life-threatening as a, as, a, as a hit to the neck. Uh, and he very nearly bled out. He had he had only minutes to live. But you know, it's a, it's a thigh wound. You don't think of that as as serious. But if you hit an artery, especially because you know gravity is just you're gonna all the blood is going to run right out of your body. So um, there was a shootout, I think in Watertown, if I remember correctly. And um, during the shootout, one of the brothers uh, got backed over by the other brother in the escape attempt. And they had shot and injured him, but then he got run over by his own brother. And the brother escaped. Um, one of them escaped. The other one was, was killed there. When they, when they approached him, he had on a suicide vest, so it was reasonable to assume the other one would have one as well. A manhunt began to find this guy, and right. I, I was listening to conservative pundits sitting there saying, well, you can't violate people's rights when doing this, and you know, you can't, this is police overstepping, and I'm sitting there going, I know members of that police department. And what they're doing right now is trying to save people's lives by finding someone who's already bombed uh, the marathon, uh, uh, the, the, the end of the marathon, who's just run over his brother and um, is almost certainly wearing a suicide vest, which means the lucky officer to find him is probably dead. They are being asked to go find someone. Right. And the reward for doing your job correctly is you're probably going to die. And they all did it anyway. I couldn't have been prouder of the Boston Police Department that day, and um, so when we when they talk, when people give police a hard time, there's absolutely I've seen video of police officers setting people up. Uh, I mean, I you, you can find it on YouTube. There's abuses, there's problems, mm -hmm. absolutely. But when they talk about people are trying to get, and this is we haven't gotten an update, so I'd like to update where we are on the story. But you had said, you know, people aren't going back, and people aren't, and they they're limited in how much they can force people back. If, the, if a police officer tells me to do something, I do it. 
I do it. it it's right. that simple. And there is some white privilege to that. I know it's hard. It, and uh, that's another discussion we already have on the books. Uh, but that's, um, uh, <laughs> I, I get a little, I know it's, it's amazing how many, this is, we're, oh God, I mean, we're, we're going to be doing the live. We're going to be doing the punditry. It's, it's all going to be one smorgasbord of news, politics, and culture. But uh, uh, while I've been ranting on um, police, uh, do we do we have anything else? It said uh, Dave McGinnis, who was in the, um, uh, oh, and I guess it's about to rain over there. Heavy rain and thunder, because that's really what they need right now. Uh, so, what, what do we know anything else right now? What's what's going on? Yeah, it's uh, still uh, still firing shots. Um, it is now dark, um, so they have not ended that situation. Um, Let's see. Yeah, still the same news. Uh, lots of uh, there's still uh, uh, active gunfire. Uh, more people are starting to crowd the area, which is unfortunate. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's all we've got right now. As much as I, as I understand, we have a voyeur culture. We really do, and I I get that, and that's another thing worth. Oh yeah discussing but um at some point it's well, like don't you well you can even see it just on the freeway and, as in as oh yeah right. like rubbernecking christopher hitchens had um yeah had a, a thing about that where he had said um uh what is it where he had said that uh you know, everybody is all saying, oh, oh, there but for the grace of God go I, when really what they're thinking is there by the grace of God go he. Um, I, I do think that there is a tendency to when you see somebody who is in trouble on, on the freeway or something, you see a car wreck, you sit there and you say, well, uh, however bad my life is, at least I'm not that guy. At least I haven't screwed it up that badly, which is a terror. It, it's an unfair thing to say because you have no idea what this guy did or didn't do wrong in his life. You have no idea. Accidents happen. But I think that's what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, I, I, I also think that we just have not Go ahead. Uh, well, I, I, I do want to hear your response to that. I keep forgetting, A, there's a bit of a lag, and I will mm -hmm. work on that. I'm slowly working. We now have the live chat up. Your your window is now up. Your your screen is up. So it's like it's sort of – Yeah, I saw <laughs> that. We, 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 we were <laughs> going to do a test today. This this Our test is apparently now the the live. But um, the uh, – and then I'm going to try to fix one more thing. And uh, I'm sorry. What was I – uh, saying uh, we were talking about oh yeah the the rubbernecking on I do want to get your, your culture uh, I did want to get your opinion on that but the other thing is of course we don't have a formal producer and we've been talking about getting a formal producer and I think right now we're both sort of doing production uh, work and I'd, I'd much rather that the two of us can stick to sort of punditry which is essentially what we're doing but uh, I, I'd like to think we're doing a, a, a decent job of of uh, uh, both running the show and commenting on this. So I do want to, so uh, about the voyeur culture, what did you have to say about that? So I think there's a, also just a natural biological tendency for our species to anytime something is, is interesting or strange or different, particularly something dangerous, we have a tendency to stare, you know, um, I don't think it's just, hey, I'm glad I'm not that guy. But I think there's also like, you know, there's something deeply biological with, you know, hey, Bob just got eaten by a jaguar. Don't <laughs> be like Bob. What did Bob do wrong? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that's I, true. I really think there is something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the, 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 the rubbernecking on the freeway bugs me as much as this does because... I don't know. There's something about making a spectacle out of somebody's tragedy and sitting there and, you know, uh, uh, staring at them as you as you drive by. Besides, you never know when you're going to see something you can never unsee. That's a really good point. And I think there, that I mean, that, that cuts both ways now, doesn't it? Which is um, you want to see something new on, on some level. You want to see something that you haven't we haven't seen before. And I think we had talked about this earlier about the. Um, uh, new experiences. Uh, oh no, it was actually uh, uh, Mr. McGinnis, uh, Dave McGinnis, with whom I had been um, 
speaking mm -hmm. and he had uh, said that, you know, psychologically, we remember the new experience as something different, something strange, much better. And I think we are looking for, especially if there's a monotony to a day to day, we don't have the same kind of a regular stimulus in this world that we that we that we had. Uh, I think when we were the, the hunter gatherers, foragers, I think life has changed a lot for us. But I think that means we are looking for that stimulation. And to some extent, we want to see something new. But I think you're right. I think it can quickly be something we really did not want to see. Um, so what I'm going to yeah. do, I, I do think that I'd love to have a sort of a better communication way. I think that so far we're getting some communication from people in the live chat. And um, I see some some uh, people there I recognize, see some new names too, all of which is nice. But um, what I'm going to do is, uh, and certainly I'd love to have, you know, anybody who's got any questions or anything they'd like to discuss, they can uh, bring that up. I am going to do look at two things that I want to look at right here. I'm also going to send you... Um, Ansgar, just a, a quick DM, so expect that in a minute. Um, I've been trying to sort of right. do multiple things, but I, I want to hit you up with that. <laughs> we got to reach out for a producer. <laughs> we got to what? We really do. Well, we got to yeah, reach we, out for a producer. We, 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 we do, really do. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's, yeah, I think that would um, make life uh, a lot easier. Um, I, I, yeah. I know a couple of producers that might be willing to do it and we just got to see if you know there's there's something to be had or if it's just one of those situations where we're going to take 95 percent um right <laughs> in, in, inside joke that i just have to have to uh, make um so uh, to, to recap for anyone who's who's new here and actually well uh, i'll tell you what do you want to recap that way i can actually send you this because I, <laughs> I can't recap and chat at the same time uh, David uh, McGinnis says, "I know who the guy is." I I have no clue um, what he's talking. Well, who, Mr. McGinnis? I I I've never heard I of think this guy. I, no, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I know. There's no, nobody here knows what uh, I'm talking about. It's 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 lies and slander. Why don't you DM us? Yeah. Well, no, I think he might be uh, saying that uh, knows who the shooter is. I don't no, know. I think no, I think he knows who the producer is that I was talking about. Um, but oh, uh, oh okay yeah. yeah 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 never mind let's hope he doesn't know who the shooter is if he knows who the shooter is like he's got an instant spot on we're going to test the midstream <laughs> layout and we are going to open up a guest window and he's going to come in and he's going to enlighten us <laughs> as to who this guy is because i do have a couple of questions for mr mcginnis so um yes we are well, saying because you could find out on facebook or something like that okay you know? yeah but yeah all right. Well, um, so I'll tell you what, why don't you, um, if you could just sort of give us a recap, I'm going to send you this message and then we will sort of, I'll get back in. Okay. So the recap so far is um, uh, we had uh, officers attempt to serve a warrant in uh, Philadelphia and um, a gunfight uh, broke out. Uh, several uh, uh, civilians, we don't know how many, were inside the house who fled the house. Six officers were injured, one in the head, one in the leg. We don't know the extent of the, uh, of the other injuries. Uh, two officers are in the house right now, uh, still trapped with the gunman. From what I've seen, um, they are on the bottom floor of the house, of the residence, and the gunman is held up in the uh, top floor. Um, he has, uh, he live streamed part of the, uh, gunfight, uh, before police shut down the live feed. He was, uh, live streaming it to Facebook. Um, they wanted to end the, uh, shooting before nightfall. That didn't happen. Um, right now, uh, we have SWAT team who seem to be repositioning around the residence, uh, but, um, they haven't been able to bring the shooting to an end yet. And I think that pretty much brings us up to date. I think so. And I think you were right, actually. I think McGinnis found the, found the, um, found the guy on Facebook. So I think I may start a, um, a, a, a conversation with him and see what he knows, or at least if he can maybe start DMing me some of the details. Uh, that would be great. I would like to know a little bit more about the guy in particular. I'd also like to know uh, what his job is. It's it's he was home, 
this raid ostensibly happened ostensibly i don't i don't have the details but just guessing around 2 p.m no later than that 5 p.m uh so well okay so he might have been home by the, i'd like to know a little bit more about who this guy is without necessarily getting too much into into it uh uh so hopefully uh, mr mcginnis will um get in touch with us uh all right i finally sent you that dm and yeah this is this is um so this is our our first episode our first episode was scheduled for tomorrow we were going to do a test today and we were in we we were uh, in a, a, a sort of a testing routine getting ready to start the test when this happened we don't have all our graphics up yet we don't have everything working quite yet it's working reasonably well actually there's some uh, difficulty with some of the graphics early on but everything's up and running so this is for the, this is a show what one of the things we, we're going to be doing a couple of things we are currently scheduled every thursday for discussions on um politics and um uh we're scheduled every thursday to discuss culture sorry, arts politics. news Thank you. whatever Yes. Uh, actually, why don't you do you mind yeah. uh, talking about our program? I'm Current gonna. Events. I got your reply. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Um, so Thursdays we're going to be um, uh, we're going to be doing a, a any kind of a show that is just um, uh, discussing a topic from current events, politics, uh, news. Um, arts, entertainment, um, pretty much whatever strikes our fancy and whatever seems to be uh, relevant uh, uh, at, at the time. Um, however, it is uh, Tues Tuesdays. Were we doing Tuesdays for the yep. the other show? Tu uh, Tuesdays we'll, okay, so we'll Tuesdays will yep. be yeah be interviewing people, uh, potentially hosting debates in the future. Uh, bringing on guests to discuss pretty much the same kinds of things, but but topics that we neither of us feel necessarily educated enough or um, uh, or informed well enough to feel as though we can um, we should be uh, talking about the subject just the two of us and with you all in the chat. So yeah, that's that's uh, basically how the show is going to go. So uh, Tuesday. Day we have scheduled what uh, was the the topic? Uh, Tuesday's topic is, and actually the, the calendar should be on the uh, standing by page, but right now it's um. Uh, oh, hold on one second. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday's topic is uh, social media and how it influences our oh, yeah. views on politics and um, culture and how this sort of this this demand for immediate information of which by the way we are actually taking somewhat advantage of at this present moment that hasn't escaped my notice but um true uh like uh yeah that's and that's uh, that's uh, we, uh, somebody may call us out as hypocrites on that one we'll, we'll we'll have that discussion but uh in particular also sort of how um social media plays in uh radicalization of people and i think you had actually framed it a bit better but also the um how it uh, uh, people get false information from it, and uh, what um, mm -hmm. do you? Uh, well, also just the everyday um, inescapable nature of uh, yes. of politics. Now, you know, there's no break from politics, and there's even a push in most uh, media uh, to 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 you know politicize it as much as possible. So you know, people aren't really getting a downtime between uh, politics. We've gone from one extreme to the other to, you know, don't talk about politics and religion to talk about it all the time and, uh, you know, in everything. So, well, and I define, think, yeah, your, that was define yourself and, by your, define yourself by your politics. It used to be that you could be friends with someone who yes. didn't, didn't necessarily agree with you. And then now, uh, now you can't, in fact, we have to define ourselves by, and it's, it's led to this, I don't know if it's an increase in tribalism. It feels like that. I, I, I certainly perceive that. I don't know if there's a the perception versus a right. reality situation there, but it certainly feels like um, that. I will say, and uh, there's um, uh, flat earth debates are a break from politics. Uh, yeah, flat earth debates are a break <laughs> from reality. Um, the, <laughs> they really are. <laughs> um, so, and we've got that with Cheshire Vic. Um, so, uh, she, she took it as a, as a, uh, 
what was it she said? She said, uh, uh, I forget how she put it's it. It's a trap. It. It's I'm a in. trap I'm in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was like, oh, she knows us well. <laughs> <That's>, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we've got Cheshire Vic now. I saw Mike uh, and in to, the... And tomorrow's topic? Uh, uh, tomorrow's topic is um, the uh, cancel culture or the... the um, uh, Yes. Uh, outrage culture so um you know where we we shout down people with dissenting voices we shout down and i don't i don't think we're going to necessarily hit directly on there is something that's a, a topic i'm very interested in discussing what i don't think it would be our first one out of course technically now it would be our second one out but um which was um a lot of what's been going on with at least on on the twitter atheist community what's been going on with transgate and red's rhetoric and all all of that stuff i think we're gonna be discussing much yeah. that sort of but in a much broader context we will i think also discuss that very specifically because I am interested in that and that issue has touched uh, the lives of people I care about myself and 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 everybody so I think we'll discuss that one sure. specifically but I, tomorrow is going to be generally you know what happens when somebody says something unpopular they apologize for it is it not accepted Did, are they shamed are they shut down do they get locked out I think that Sarah Silverman was the example that you gave that I think was was perfect. So I think that's going to be tomorrow's show. So tomorrow we got that one. Next Tuesday we uh, were we got um, Cheshire Vic and um, uh, yeah, she's well. Okay, so I guess she didn't know she was coming on, which is is sort of this is. I think we're going to be doing that. The we're going to. I want to corner the market on the gotcha interview where you don't even know you're being interviewed until it's just, sort of, listen, you up for a quick hangout? Do you <laughs> mind? Okay. You're on live now with a thousand people. I got a couple of questions for you. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you should um, master that style interview, stealth interview, man. Stealth, stealth. Or just have the interview, but like not let her know that she's live. I, I really like that. She's not still in the chat. Is she? Um, it could ruin it if you, if you, if you, <laughs> yeah, that that could be an issue. Um, so yeah. we'll, uh, and then uh, I, I could look at the calendar and see what's next. I did want to just to get back to the breaking story because um, there's a couple things I would like to yes, discuss please. about that. First of all, one of the things I found interesting was the um, injury to the um, to his leg, and that's another one where that sounds. In reasonably innocuous, um, it, for the, it really isn't. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I got back to that the situation that what happened with the um, um, uh, suicide bomber at the at the uh, uh, there was a police officer in Boston shot in the leg, and he was really by the time they stopped the bleeding, he was seconds away from uh, you know bleeding out, needing immediate resuscitation, and probably right. just not surviving. Um, so okay, I'm having troubles. I have an image I would like to get up here, but I am having okay. troubles uh, just getting it because of the way Twitter saves images and so on and so forth. So the the leg injury, I I don't want. Um, while to... you're doing that, I've got yeah. some updates. Oh please. Okay, so okay, so we've got um, four women were escorted from the residence. So there were four women inside the residence when this all happened. Um, uh, the police were first called to the scene around 5 p.m. Um, for narcotics activity. Um, at least one officer has been shot in the head, one in the leg, and another in the hand. It's unclear where the others were uh, shot. Um, and I guess uh, up until recently, uh, the university in the area, University Health Services Center, um, had been on lockdown. Um, but that was lifted uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, their time. And um, the police are urging people, of course, to seek shelter and stay out of the way. All right. And that's um, OK. So that's 7 p.m. Um, the uh, show time too, which is another yeah. thing I do. Uh, uh, we're supposed to have a clock up here. We got kind of a countdown timer to our. We're gonna sort of try to stay to an, a one-hour show uh, for the for the non-breaking news events. But I think um, uh, you know we, we we got a countdown timer there that says we've got eight minutes left, and I think we're gonna may violate that today. So uh, yeah. what I find interesting is. 
So uh, our, the first report we got was that it was they were serving a warrant, and now it sounds like they were. Uh, well, I don't know if they were coming in on probable cause or, um, right? Uh, you know what precisely was causing them? If it was probable cause, that explains a bit more in my mind. It explains the late hour at which this happened. It explains um, the number of injuries because normally I really just would not expect to see that. Um, uh, you know, normally, unless they called, unless the warrant was last minute, like you know, sometimes they call the judge and say, "Hey, we need a warrant right now." Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I yeah, that's that's true. Um, they can, they can absolutely, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a fair point. Um, all right. So, uh, and your your frame has uh, frozen again temporarily. So, what I figured out was, in one of the tests, your frame would work while I was busy on one of the other monitors, but now it. <laughs> It freezes, and um, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is next time I'm going to save my work until you're like right in the middle of you're trying to do, do like a, a under without anyone looking like I'm just going to scratch my nose. I'm going to pick my nose real quick. I don't think anyone's going to freeze it right there. And I look, oh, sorry, I had to get the news off of that monitor <laughs> there, put it under this monitor here. But I'm just being, you know, I'm I'm being a journalist and doing all my integrity stuff. Um, so. Uh, Sounds like something you'd do. Yeah, it's totally something I got. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, it yeah. is. Okay. Um, so um, I'll just make sure that I uh, pick my nose with my middle finger from now on. So if, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you you're gonna save do it. Everything. You're going to be doing everything. You're going to be like, oh, Nick, I got something in my eye here, dude. Um, <laughs> so I'd, I'd, I'd to try to, um, you know, I do think. Okay, let's see. I'm going to actually move this and just make sure we got this in the right frame here. Uh, you know, so I, I think this is our sort of our very first um, live show, uh, well, sort of breaking news show. And I think we're going to end up, you know, unfortunately doing more of them. And I think one of the reasons that, uh, one of the things that we can offer is commentary from, from two people who have some experience with this kind of thing. And... Um, you know, also who are prepared to, you know, really go through the news sources, collate it, and try to figure out what's going on, so that people have uh, the, the the most up to date, you know, information possible. I do, I do think, you know, we're we're buddies, and so there is going to be um, some banter back and forth and some joking, and I I don't want that to detract from uh, the severity of of the news sources. Uh, the the no. one of the really good things is that nobody here is. Um, injured or or dead but i think you'll also see you know i i think we need to keep it serious but i think we also need to you know we're we're going to be us and so to to people who are watching now if we start to get out of line and to you know you can always let us know but i think also on on some level you know it's it's there's an acknowledgement that we're trying to um keep it human as well um especially you know, people who pick their nose on live stream yeah yeah, um, I, I think in general that uh, that uh, um, there there almost has to be some levity when dealing with some of these uh, darker situations. You know, uh, as my my mother used to say, I, I laugh to uh, keep from crying. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I actually, I, I'm also the other thing I want to do. I was so busy working on this image, which is actually queued up. Uh, uh, Mr. McGinnis had some information for me and I did want to get that because I do appreciate him doing that. Um, and so let me, uh, and I've also, this is one of the things, uh, you know, we, we rise to the level of our computer. Um, I, I, you know, I'm always maxing out the RAM on my computer. I got 300 windows open and, and the whole nine yards. And then uh, of course what ends up happening is I, uh, once I have more memory, I realize, hey, I can up my, my computer even more, and I, I could do, I can, I can have 36 windows open at a time and 300 browser, you know, things, and so that's where I am now. <laughs> so of course, the memory didn't solve a problem; it just allowed me to get myself in even bigger trouble. Um, so uh, there is a, a window that's got there. You are so hopefully I can make you live again. Um, yeah, that'll kick in in a second. All right, so um, let me. Uh, so as of as of now, uh, the the they put the, the university. Which university was it? Um, it was University Health Medical Services, something like that. So it sounds like a a a you know an extension of the university. 
university that is a uh, um, a hospital or something like that. They were closed down uh, for, I guess, two hours because uh, the calls came in around five and um, they were they were finally, um, you know, allowed to resume business around seven. And I guess some of the businesses around that area as well. I wonder if by resuming the businesses, what they're hoping is that people will um, go, believe it or not, uh, this is just a, a, a speculation. They're hoping that people will go to those businesses and hang out there instead of waiting outside and trying to see what's going on. You know, go in, get, <laughs> get some air conditioning or, or um, seriously, whatever. All right, I'm going to have to switch uh, media because uh, my computer is starting to have some difficulties. But what I'm going to do now, um, this is uh, one that you and I uh, briefly discussed. I, I do think that um, it's a good idea not to um, uh, not to talk too much about the shooter um, for a number of reasons. Um, I do have some uh, of his um, his um, information here and I'm going to try to look through that at a minute. I, I have to appreciate. Thank you, uh, Dave. Dave McGinnis, who um, uh, is a, a good friend of mine uh, and he has uh, sent me some of that information. So thank you. I don't know if he's still in the live chat or sort of bailed when we've been doing all this other thing. The other thing is I'm going to I'm going to put up now and uh, we discussed this uh, uh, briefly. He, uh, he did live stream uh, some of the initial confrontation, and um, this is, um, it doesn't actually look all that, it, uh, I, I, I haven't seen it, and I don't think there's any need to see it, um, but uh, we do have a, a screenshot of, of one image from it, and I think it's probably worth um, getting into that. So um, what I'm going to do here is I've got it queued up. And I will switch over to that in a minute. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, actually, I mean, it's it's a little difficult, actually. It, uh, I should, I'm not trying to play it up or anything. And you're going to look at it and you're going to say, well, what's the big deal? But um, what I'm going to do is, um, and now here's the other thing, which is I am trying to, uh, I, I switched out. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five monitors doing 17 different things, which of course means I can't find anything. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put this video up. I'm not going to put up the video. I'm just going to put up. We just got one um, screenshot of it, and uh, let's see here. Um, all right. And uh, so that's that's the video, or that's uh, that's a, a clip from the live stream. And uh, what you can see here is that um, it, it. I mean, it looks like I, that's. I don't think that's a, a pistol that he's holding, Adam. That looks like. Well, maybe it's a pistol. I, I don't know what that looks like to you. That looks like a a, a more powerful. Arm. No, it was. The report said that he had a rifle. That he had a long gun. In fact, um, I listened to the um, the actual nine one one call, yep. and uh, the guy actually said, uh, and the police actually said, um, uh, "Long gun long, uh, was was in the actual uh, report, was yeah, in the I'm actual call." As they said that he had a long gun and that they needed SWAT with long guns on site. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So SWAT was okay. So SWAT was was well armed. So this is this is at least one SWAT officer. But you can see another officer holding a child there on the um, uh, upper mm. right. And so, which uh, I mean, oh, yeah. sort of suggests to me what we had been saying earlier, which is when you get this many officers wounded, usually it's because either they walk into a trap of some kind, which even then they, they sort of always assume it's a trap. It's it, it's hard to do that much injury to officers um, or they are trying to protect innocent people. And that's how they they get um, injured. So I just, uh, you know, that that's. Um, uh, so the the uh, sergeant 
um, of Philly police who is in charge of the situation is now urging people not to operate drones in the area. <laughs> so apparently people were trying to get a look via drones. Oh, God. <laughs> God. oh Lord. <laughs> uh, oh, man. <laughs> right? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> well, and um, I have a couple right now. We only have Let's a couple see. of news sources in here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move that off. I don't think there's any reason to keep that on any longer than necessary. Um, so um, the uh, we've only got um, two news sources plugged in here. I would like to get you know more plugged in at some point for for these kinds of shows so uh i mean right now i mean again this is can i i want to share something with you hold on i, I want to share something with you now this doesn't have anything to do with uh, the breaking news itself but merely a cultural attitude that frustrates the hell out of me and you can choose to i mean i could even take a screenshot of this and black out the at if you want me to you tell me if you want to talk about this but i i sent you somebody's tweet and it's just like oh, come on really that is that is just gross all right now let me um god Again, and again, normal, I mean, and if I sadly, was live, I'd have set this up so that I was ready thousands to. Thousands and thousands of likes. Um, let's. Do... Yeah. Yeah, I'm blacking out the name now just in case you want to. Right. Uh, just in case you want to do that. Oh, God. Whenever I see I see that, I'm. And then not... I'll send you the. Uh... The, the uh, bane of my existence. You have mail from Ongskar. Oh, good! What 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 lovely joy do I have today? <sighs> okay, what is um? Oh, uh, that's funny. All right, so I've got that copy, and then I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and send it through. Do you want me to send it through DM or email? Oh, um, yeah. Why, uh, why don't you DM it first, and if we decide we're gonna put it up, we'll uh, well, uh, you can either screen share it, um, or I can put it up in the in the main window. There you go. Uh, my, uh, my, I had uh, access to the live chat through the back end, but now it's um, when I switched to the screen to get you back up, I lost that. And again, this is all stuff that would normally be worked out. This is very beta. Um, so, uh, oh, and Puddle <laughs> has has joined us, which is which is um, good. Well, uh, we should probably end up doing maybe another recap. Uh, in a minute um, just for Puddle. No, let's, we won't say that's the reason. Um, but this is one reason why I'd like to have, you know, for testing, you know, I'm not going to drop in every news source that we're, we're going to have plugged in here for testing because uh, it just slows things down and uh, makes life right. a lot more difficult. And really, I wasn't anticipating doing our first live story until maybe next week. Um, and, right. Uh, yeah, I know. This one just happened to be. Yeah. Oh Jesus! But, Where did you that seen come it? From? Huh? Oh God! That came from a I I, the, I linked you the account above, but that's a yeah. And look how many likes it has and retweets yeah, and. No, that's we're gonna put that up. And um, that's it's. Yeah, I figured as much. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Quickly looking to see, see if anybody I know. Definitely, is, uh, I would oh say. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this has had... Oh, wow. Uh, we don't have a vertical window for this, but I'll, uh, it's, yeah. it's, easy enough, it's easy enough to do. Um, that's really... Wow. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Hanskar found a, a piece of, of um, internet um, culture uh, about this story. Um, culture? Culture, yeah. <laughs> I, well, yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, floating around. And, technically, uh, it's culture. Technically, it's not, it's not the kind that you would like. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is, and this may freeze you up again, because right now I can only work on that. 
Um, but I think that's worth putting up and then we can have you talk about how you found it. I think you're right. That's definitely worth talking about. Um, so it, it pertains specifically to this story. Uh, this and, and before we put it up, don't go harass this person. <laughs> well, yeah, no, let's not. I don't think I don't think there's a point. Um, I think hopefully they're going to get harassed by someone. I'd, I'd, wow. Uh, I mean, I, I, <laughs> let me rephrase that. That didn't come out quite that way. <laughs> Speaking of phrasing, I mean, there's probably, there's going to get pushback. I, <laughs> no, if it they, it, yeah. So, don't bother getting them because so many people are just going to do it anyway. It's you're wasting your time. Let's, let's let other people be tribalistic. Um, <laughs> no, um, I, 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 I mean, there, I, with this many likes, the problem isn't, in my opinion, the problem isn't that they that they said this. Um, the problem is that this has, as of right. when you did this, as of when you screenshot this, which was it, this has 1,630 retweets. Um, and and sometimes, I mean, to be fair, sometimes people retweet yep, 6, stuff that 000... they don't like. Um, so, so you you, to, they usually quote tweet it, but then it's also got six thousand. Uh, 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 it has over six thousand likes. Jesus! All right, now I have um, my system is starting to yeah. lag a bit. Um, so it's just okay. <clears throat> the other thing is, if you wanted to, you could screen share because your screen well, your screen is, is down again because I'm whenever I uh, have to access my desktop your if you your... want me to screen share i can do that okay let's do that definitely the version that doesn't have the um so let me get your your image back up and live and then maybe we'll just have you screen share it um the um yeah, that file i yeah. sent you just sure. just just the the one with the uh -huh. the donkey in the compromising to make sure that that one's not the don't 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 share that one oh we were, right We've we've already don't done we, one. yeah don't share don't don't share that one uh, we've already done enough uh, in the first five minutes it's a violation of copyright law YouTube um, <laughs> uh, YouTube guidelines and all this this is a great show it's just, you know spectacular I'm 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 very excited I I love this plan I'm excited to be a part of it um, let's, uh, let's, uh, I, I, I was using I was using temper yes they're copyrighted but they were it was just placeholders while we're looking for we've licensed everything this is all right um are you back up and okay. live? Can you see no me? i i can't so i just gotta find the um uh so i'm gonna get you back up uh the problem is i so you uh you are Okay, that's that's your Twitter. Which actually, if I close that, it'll make finding you a lot easier. All right. Well, I just closed it, and I realized I kind of need access to Twitter. There you go. You are well. You're you're white while it reloads uh, and refreshes the frame. So as soon as the and it's refreshed, and there it is. Got it. That is a little small. People may have a hard time seeing okay. that. Is that something you can make bigger okay, or? Let me see if I can. There you go. Much better. It is a Come little on. out of. Oh, the, I got a, yeah. yeah. That's as close as I can get without it oh. starting to scroll off the side. For some reason. All right. If if people can't read that, it's hard for me to judge what people can or cannot read. If people cannot read that, I can um, get that up uh, uh, on on one of the uh, information boxes in the. Um, that we have, but yeah, but it says, uh, yeah, finding out that there's an active shooter in Philadelphia, but they're only shooting cops, and you know, you've got this little guy, he like looks and then, uh, don't care. And yeah, um, it had five, uh, uh, uh five, almost six thousand uh, likes at the time that I shared it. By now, it's already up to uh, uh six point two thousand likes. Oh Jesus! Um, yeah, that's um. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this is one of the more popular tweets. 
tweets, by the way, of the of the uh, um, of the incident. I was searching for news on social media, and this is one of the most you know popular and and trending tweets, so to speak. Wow. So yeah, that's that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Well, let me. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, Fun, okay, so, huh? Yeah. So it looks like okay. A number of people couldn't read it. Yeah, Squidward was in there. So um, I will see if I can get it back up on my own here. But I'd like to um, get the stupid yeah. controls back up. Um, and then we will, um, what, what did it say? So I, I think a few people heard what we said, but uh, not many. So I, I am going to try to put that one up myself, but that's, I, we're, we're on other topic it, already. This, scheduled. this yeah. is radicalization in the extreme. Yeah, this is, this is radicalization. It really is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, well, we, Sorry, I'm having a hard time even knowing what to say. I I I I, <laughs> I feel the same way, and I think I think my wife would um, like to thank you for uh, getting me to shut up for a couple of seconds. I, that's that's not that easy to do. Um, I think <laughs> I'm very proud of the fact that we live in a country where. Um, you can say those things if you want. Um, so I, I, sure. I will say that. Um, I think that um, that kind of thing is um, really, it's, it's, <laughs> I was going to say disgusting. That's a, that's a word that's I think overused. And I'd like to try to, to describe it more than just using a simple adjective the fact of the matter is again these are people who one ha one officer has a head wound um one has a hand wound if the bullet went through mm -hmm. his hand he may lose significant functionality for that uh for the rest of his life that image that we just mm -hmm. put up earlier was of an officer holding a child um while they are approaching someone who is obviously phenomenally dangerous um cops are not perfect and there are bad cops and there are cops who plant evidence and there are cops who do terrible yes. things i'm not going to sit here and say that y you can't question cops but um uh, there are six cops that are injured one has a head wound uh he may have kids he may have a wife uh we don't know and here's someone who's like oh somebody's shooting at cops who cares cops are here first and another topic I, I would like to discuss too at some point is uh um, uh, the law and the art of criminal defense, because I'm a big fan of criminal defense attorneys, which I understand why they're not particularly well liked. And that's, uh, yeah. that's not also always un unfair either, but um, they are right. our first and last line of defense. And um, we just, uh, sorry, I'm going to try to switch here to um, get back. I want to, I want to see um, a couple of things that I'm going to try to get this uh I want to try to get this image back up in, um, sorry, I've got multiple things going on. This yeah, is go why, for it. We, we, yep, definitely. A producer um, would uh, would be very nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's amazing. These, these uh, officers don't get paid a, a tremendous amount of money. They certainly don't get the respect they deserve. And... Um, all it takes is a couple of bad officers, of which there always are, to really screw it up for um, everybody because, um, you know, we put a lot of trust in them. And when that trust is violated, we take it much more seriously than we do in most other professions. And I, I think that's because you do put your, your life in their hands and they actually have a phenomenal amount of power over you. So when that power gets abused, I, I think it's it's justifiably – I, I, I think – that people in any position of law enforcement who use their uh, position to engage in a crime should have immediately 20% added to whatever the the normal penalty would be for that crime. Uh, you, you just have to, if you're going to be in law enforcement, agreed. you have to be held to a higher standard. Yeah. But uh, well, on, the, on the flip side... I think this is a subject for another day. Yeah, it is. Oh, go ahead. 
Uh, well, no, no. So that's, uh, I mean, that's it. Uh, the flip side is, um, you know, we do, it is a, it is, they're held to a higher, they're held to a higher standard. And um, when they, when they violate it, reason. it's, it's, it's a bigger problem. It just is. I was going to say, you know, for me, um, while this is a subject for another day, um, I think that uh, it's not the police in and of themselves that are the issue. It is the framework that has been built that they operate in that is the largest issue. Y yeah, there are individual cops who are assholes. And, you know, most, I would think, are probably uh, a, a good. I have no data to suggest, you know how many of the officers are great people. That's that's a pretty hard thing to uh, parse out. But my my intuition would say that most are good people who really do want to serve their communities. Um, however, the framework in which they're operating in, that seems to me to be a larger issue than uh, um, whether or not some a portion of the officers themselves are, are, are racist or, or violent or brutal because, you know, the proper system should be weeding those kinds of people out anyways, or at least a large portion of them. Um, yep. I, I think that's a, a good point. I'm going to, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm doing a couple of things here. We got, we got yeah. a complaint, Fox news. So basically it could be anything. I, I, I discussed my use of Fox news, uh, earlier. And I, I think it's a, uh, uh, a legit mm -hmm. complaint. I am not a fan of Fox news, but I am a fan of using, uh, as many sources as possible. One thing I will also say is on occasion, when I'm looking at the news, I like to see what Fox, I, I don't take them as a particularly reliable source. I think there are times when uh, they are usable, um, and, but you have to understand sort of how and why in the context. But what I will say is that um, the, uh, every now and then, when, there, when there's, uh, sometimes when there's breaking news that is positive towards a um, Democrat or liberal. I like to I like to switch and watch Fox News simultaneously. That's one thing that this is actually set up to do, where we can put any news source in any window we want. And I like to watch right. um, these simultaneously because it is. And I, I I get people all the time who sit there and say, "Well, you're a liberal. Do you, you so you never watched Fox News? So how do you know it's unreliable?" I know because I do watch it and I compare it in live to what 16 mm -hmm. other sources are saying, and it's always yeah. really it's an education. Um. It's, it's, so um, here's the latest update, by the way. Yes. Um, so it was. Um, so here's here's everything we've got. Um, uh, at large, uh, da -da -da, so 4:30 p.m. was when the um, shooting uh, took place. Okay. Um, the police said uh, that the incident began when a narcotics officer attempted to serve a warrant. So they did attempt to serve a warrant. Uh, Philadelphia police commissioner um, uh, said that the officers were already inside and in the rear of the building when the gunman opened fire, forcing them Jesus. to escape uh, uh, like by diving out of windows and, uh, and doors. Um, and they're, they're describing it a barrage of bullets. Um, they took cover behind cars and blocked off the surrounding streets as they were fired upon. Uh, three uh, uh, by an unidentified shooter. Uh, uh, three hours after the shooting began, uh, they were attempting to negotiate their surrender, but um, he was still inter uh, intermittently firing at the officers. Um, uh, uh, they're concerned um, uh, about a potential hostage situation, considering there's two officers stuck, uh, still stuck, in, uh, stuck inside. He said that the, he, uh, I'm going to read his quote, we believe that they're okay, and I'm not going to say much more about that uh, right now out of concern for their safety. Um, but we believe that this male is in a certain part of the building. I don't tell you, won't tell you where they are, uh, 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 um, where they are, where he is, so that I don't endanger the officers um, on the scene in any way. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, um, other officers were injured in a car accident at a nearby intersection while responding to the scene. Um, and. Um, 
let's see, uh, there are no life-threatening injuries, um, including the one um, with uh, who was hit in the head, but apparently he was just grazed. So there we go. Okay, so um, one of the interesting things about that um, is that it, they seem to not be able to confirm that the shooter was the one they were actually was the one they were actually getting uh, serving the warrant on. Right, they haven't they haven't said that, so it could very well be that they were there for someone else on a rather you know different, you know, uh, a completely different thing. And this person just opened fire. We also don't know what kind of building this is. You know, um, are there renters there? I mean, there were four uh, female um, civilians that were escorted. So this could have been a small um, duplex or apartment building or something like that. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I've got the uh, image up. I'm going to uh, I'm going to transition that over. Uh, we are out of sp actually we're not out of you know what I'm going to move the image. I was going to cover up the live chat um, and, and, and that was but it's hard to do that without that being seen as commentary on the, our, our audience. And frankly, there's only a few people there I would want to take having it taken personally the rest really you know no but uh for for some people there yeah it, it, it's, it's just you know it. it's already up to seven thousand likes oh my god you you, you have to wonder yeah. if people are i mean sometimes i think people do do this to to get attention and all the but um well so that's it it's up um i'm not going to leave that up uh too long because I don't like having that up there. I, I, I do think um, that's worth. I think that's worth discussing, and I'm, I'm glad we found it. Uh, you you have to wonder. Um, you have to. Uh, you have Just to wonder. As, okay. Yeah. Just in principle, I want to say, even when Osama bin Laden, who we can all say was objectively just a a horrible you know, person. At no point did I celebrate his death. Even when I recognized that that this human being's death might be a positive benefit to the world, if, you know, even if I recognize that, I don't have to celebrate in, in the suffering or the injury or the death of another human being. Um, That's... Yeah, what were you going to say? Yeah, that's just that's just my ethical stance on that. I just I I cannot abide, um, at least in myself, celebrating the suffering of another human. Um, I, I I think that's a very um, I like I like that observation. I think that what what I I like about it, especially the way you you just framed that, is that it's it's as much about wanting to look at yourself in the morning. <laughs> Uh, to and, yeah. and to realize that you know he he had children he had um, family and while it is impossible to remove from him the damage that he did to other people who had children and who had a family um, we are most defined by how we respond when confronting monsters. And I think that's a topic you and I both find interesting for a number of reasons, because uh, a lot of the, the topics that we have scheduled for the next month, we, we've already, we're, we're scheduled a month out in advance now. And uh, most of those topics are, uh, how do you um, deal with things that you don't like, people that you don't like, situations that you don't like. And I think that defines us as much as anything does. So... Um, both as individuals and a culture, to be honest. No, I think that's another very important observation. All right. Well, um, while I'm uh, doing all the, these shenanigans on the back end, uh, your uh, your ugly mug ain't on the on the on the thing here. So let me see if I can fix that and um, <laughs> get you back up there. And in the meantime, um, uh, actually, I'm gonna uh, put that up. Oh, that's, yeah, that's not going to help. So we've got, um, I've been sort of neglecting the chat because I had to take down the chat window for a minute. And I think um, 
one of the other things. I mean, we do have, so like I said, I've actually got, a, so I've got like a laptop, and it's an old laptop, but I got an old laptop there, uh, a really old laptop there, like a Pentium 2 or something like that, I think. But it, it can view web pages. And so, you know, we just got this sort of set up. And if we were prepared for this as we were planning on being, um, all of this would be uh, good to go. And I wouldn't be viewing sort of the back end of the live stream from the same computer that I'm viewing all my news and trying to get all the everything else done. So I, you know, I, it's um, a little hectic. Um, not bad, I think, for a, 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 a beta test. It's, it's. I'm going to blame um, Ansgar. I was ready to go to bed, and he called me up and said, "Nick, there was a shooting, man. We got to go live." And I was just like, "No, let's wait." And he was like, "No, Nick, if you're my friend, you'll do it." Yeah. Okay, that wasn't quite the story. Go with it. Go with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I was blubbering. In fact, I, I made him get on video chat just so that I could blubber <laughs> and he could watch a grown man cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I have seen plenty of grown men cry, but usually it's in the mirror every morning. Oh, and I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh that got dark. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, uh, yeah. okay. No suspect has been arrested. Oh wow! Okay, well we have a couple of uh, questions that I did want to deal with in the live chat. I will let you catch up on that. That is good, and he's alive, which is good too. Um, so let me just. Um, why don't you catch up on that, and I will. Um, they're gonna cut. Oh, okay. Oh so, no! Uh, never mind. That's not him. That's a different thing that somebody posted. Fake oh, news. Oh, fake news. <laughs> Literally fake news. fake news. Sorry. All right, all yeah. right. Well, uh, that is one thing I, I wanted to discuss with you at some point, <laughs> anyway. Which is we're going to have to make sure because we are we are streaming live that uh, to just uh, uh, I want to make sure that I uh, check check the source before yeah. we, we go on something. Just so okay. So uh, Puff said yeah. um, in a scenario like this, they're going to cut the power to the building so the shooter can't access uh, to watch online um, or leave due to impending weather, and then. Um, run a signal but well i mean if they cut the power there's only so much he can broadcast from his phone facebook ostensibly i mean facebook has procedures for this kind of thing um already in place and they will cut it i mean if the police say cut it they will and this is another example of i'm sure some right i mean seriously right wing i'm not talking just like regular republican i mean some seriously right wing guy is going to sit there and say well why is facebook kowtowing to the police now if the police say we want you to cut a live feed they um Facebook, uh, Twitter, all of these guys will do it for public safety. They're not required to, but they will. Um, so right. I, I don't think he's going to be broadcasting. I think they're going to. Um, I think they're going to. Uh, um, I, I think they're going to monitor that. They probably want his phone working to some extent because they want to be able to talk to the guy. But otherwise, they're going to cut um, everything they can. Uh, cut the power. And the other thing is, I mean, if it's SWAT, uh, they, they should have night vision. So the, the, they do have the advantage when, when the power has been cut. But yeah. um, so I think, uh, but I think he's, he's brought up some, some very good points. Um, yeah. Hopes and prayers. Yeah. Those are going to be uh, as useful now as they always are. Uh, so, all right. Well, um, I think uh, everybody has seen this sufficiently, so I will um, uh, take that down. Yeah. And um, thank you for finding that. I think that that was uh, worth uh, discussion, and I'm sure that will come up in one of our future episodes. Uh, I think one of the things I'm going to do is, um, now that that's down, I'm going to... Uh, uh, take a break for a minute, and we can cover. Uh, so uh, I've said this before, and it may, it may be worth. I, I think there are a few new people. It may be worth sort of uh, covering, doing yet another recap at some point in a minute. But what I do want to cover is um, the. Um, oh, well, so there's the schedule there, but actually, no. You know what? I don't have the um, schedule handy, and I'm going to have to. Uh, screw up things even more to do it. What I will do, and this is just because I understand um, it is admittedly somewhat disturbing to have um, 
Fox News in the center panel on the layout. And not that I'm a huge fan of <laughs> CNN, but um, if it's them or Fox News, so um, I will I will swap out those layouts. And then um, I mean, really, I, I, I if you're going to get news, it's Reuters or AP. Those are the real sources. But as long as you understand, somebody had mentioned MSNBC. I, I like MSNBC, but um, they're not, I think they're better than Fox News, but not by as much as I think people would like to uh, yeah. like to say or suggest. And I think people who go to MSNBC for the most part already have their opinions made up. And I think, um, I think it's, it's not, um, I, I, I like MSNBC. They have a bit more of the take that I tend to like, but that's why I'm suspicious of them. I, you know, I, I, you know, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you realize you have a, a, a sort of a blind spot. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a huge fan of Keith Olbermann, uh, but one of the things I would I would say is he's like dessert. You know what I mean? He's fattening. He ain't good for you. <laughs> you gotta realize that it's, it's empty calories, dude. It's it really tastes good, and oh my god, uh, do you feel like a million bucks on it? But it's um, it's it's it, it, it's not um, it, it's not where um, it's not where okay, the real okay. So the person. So the person that um, I saw being arrested, that people are saying, "Oh, look, they got him," was just a person of interest, not the active shooter. Okay, uh, so a person of interest. So that suggests so that he's one of two people. Either he's the um, uh, the guy who the warrant was issued for uh, initially. Um, yeah, which is possible. I'd wonder why they didn't wouldn't say that, but they may just. And he's yelling at the, uh, and he's yelling at some woman on the sidelines who's watching a bystander who obviously seems to know the guy as he's being put in the police. Bull just, and not bull like our bull, uh, bull just shot a cop as he's being shoved into the police car. Wait, bull so, just bull just shot a cop? Does Steve know? That's that's what the person of interest was saying when he was being uh, put into the police car to this a bystander. Is, this is going to completely... B-O-U-L. This is going to completely change the whole non-sec landscape. <laughs> the whole, wait, B-O-U-L? Oh. Yes, B-O-U-L. Oh, 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 oh. Never mind. Okay. Um, yeah. Different bull. Different bull. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I uh, so it's an inside joke. It was probably keep inside jokes to a reasonable minimum, but there's a, we we uh, uh, spend some time in uh, circles where there's a, a guy named Bull. Uh, it's short for his Twitter handle, but uh, uh, you couldn't meet a nicer or more honest person. And uh, it, it, yeah, if 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 he shot anyone, um, uh, yeah, that would that would in my mind be like a. a sign of the coming apocalypse that means that something something's really wrong in the world if i get that wrong about a human being because he's a great guy but uh all right um so um to um i i have a question for you yeah. um, before we do our recap um what is your stance on uh what some people would call politicizing a shooting right as it's happening. So like, for instance, I'm looking at a tweet right here and I don't necessarily disagree with the take, uh, uh, but I just want to get your, your feeling about it. Yeah, yeah. And he says, um, it is ironic that a bunch of professional good guys with guns are getting their asses handed to them, but we're going to arm teachers. So I, I understand the sentiment. And I even agree with the sentiment yeah. that, you know, arming teachers, you know, when when professional law enforcement can you know easily be overtaken like this, so I shouldn't say easily, but it can happen. But what is your stance on you know when does it become the right time to make those kinds of statements, or um, do you think that it's all good? That's a really good question. Wait, 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 hey, wait. You and I discussed this. We ambushed the guests, not each other. Excuse me. This is a live <laughs> stream. You're going to ask me that? Really? Really? Okay. Hey, man, I'm just, 
I'm just being in character here. <laughs> no, yeah, no. no, that's a spectacular question, and this is this is the perfect right time to ask it. Um, I, I I I think that that's a very difficult one to answer. Uh, I will say that there's a lot of uh, many of the people who object to it. And I think there are some legitimate objections, but many of the people who do object to it don't object uh, based on any sort of moral grounds. They tend to object, in my experience, from what I've seen, they object because they um, don't agree with what's being said. And um, right. they, they kind of want to shut down the, the conversation. Ideally, uh, now I'm not thrilled with how this comment said what it said, uh, uh, so I think you and I are of the right. same mind on that. Um, so I it's think, a little, mm, it's a little cutting. It is, especially you know? for being live and in the moment. But uh, then again, maybe that cutting wouldn't be as effective at any other point. Um, but mm -hmm. um, and it's an important sentiment. I I did a piece on gun shootings, and I pointed out. And I, I get this. People tell me all the time when, when I when I talk gun control, people all the time sit there and say, well, you know, you should wait until, you know, at least two weeks since, you know, there's been a mass shooting or something. Otherwise, you're politicizing the shooting. Here's the problem. Uh, we have a mass shooting in this country on average every seven days. Roughly. Actually, actually, I think it's less than that. Um, I, I forget what it was at the time when I did this piece, but it, it, it's, it's pretty frequently. Now, people sit there and say, oh, no, that's not true. Well, a mass shooting is described as a shooting in which three or more people were involved. This is a mass shooting at this point. Actually, it may not be because of it. So there are, there are, it depends on how you choose to define mass shooting. But um, right. they happen frequently enough that if I'm going to not discuss it for 14 days to to – not politicize it. I'm, I'm never going to get to discuss it. That's it. I'm just not going to get to discuss it. Now, that doesn't mean discussing it in the moment is necessarily the best thing to do. But on the flip side, I'm not convinced, you know, he, he's not, he's, the guy who wrote this isn't necessarily going to be heard at any time. Um, so I think, first of all, let me ask a question, which is, have I managed to cover all the sides so that it looks like I'm not taking a position at all? Because I've just covered, I'm just going to, I'm going to agree with everybody. <laughs> Here's a way to not take a position. Um, I think, um, so, um, and uh, we had, a, yes, so we, we somebody has uh, pointed out, and, and uh, this is as of this moment, that we've heard all of the six officers have uh, non-life-threatening uh, wounds, although one is to the head, right. so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about that one. The, uh, I think... And we don't know what's, what, uh, the, the condition of the two officers stuck in the house. Thank you for reminding us of that. Um, uh, so I, I, back to that question, I think it, it depends on the context and how you're doing it. I think the argument that it's being politicized, the problem is the guy who wrote that tweet, I don't think he's trying to politicize it. So his motive in this case isn't to politicize it. His motive is to is to try to draw attention to an issue that's important to him. It is a political issue, but it's right. not, it's not, he's not interested in it because he's interested in politics and he's not interested in drawing attention to it because he wants that attention for a political gain. It's specifically because right. of how he feels about this issue and because he's trying to save lives. Um, so I try to keep that in mind when I judge how recently after something. I, I do hesitate to chastise anyone for politicizing an issue because it's a good way to shut down the conversation without me having to prove my point that that person is wrong. Um, right. and I, I have to question their motives in order to make that it's in essence, it's an ad hominem and I, I am in a, a questioning their motives the second I say that, and I don't think that's productive. And I think that makes a genuine dialogue difficult. Having said that, I do think it, there's something to be said for having decorum and for trying to keep, um, a, a, you know, remembering that there's a time and a place and trying to honor that, but you can't always honor that. And some people ask that uh, you sacrifice your values in keeping with and in uh, paying homage to and honoring that. And I disagree with doing right. that. So if that answers your question. I would, I would, uh, my, my stance here would be 
that it really depends in and how you do it. You know, um, well, well, I think my specific um, objection to the way that tweet is worded is he says, you know, he talks about good guys with guns getting are getting their asses kicked, which to me just seems very, I don't know, disrespectful, very irreverent to, you know, you know, uh, men and women um, who have put their their lives on the line to save people today. Um, I get the point that he's making, but uh, I, I almost think that had he said, you know, look, trained police officers, um, good guys with guns are are you know in a bad situation where you know they've been shot. Uh, um, you know, two have maybe been taken hostage, and we want to arm you know, uh, uh, citizens who aren't nearly as well trained or nearly as well prepared, I I think just worded in a different way, even as it's ongoing, might have felt a little less uh, um, like someone's trying to be edgy. You know what I mean? You there? Hello? Sorry, sorry, I had uh, I uh, muted I muted and oh, forgot okay. to unmute because I've got the um <laughs> the boom mic and so when I go pour myself some water or something I I know you really want to hear the, the kitchen sink running so I, I mute the boom mic. One of the things I do want to find is what I think is probably one of the best clips I've ever seen of that exact sentiment, and I'm gonna try to um, get that up again. Uh, I had a system for putting that up right into the um, <clears throat> stream there, and I don't have it, but this is, and some people are going to recognize this, it is from a television show, and it is the best explaining of that sentiment that you just gave that I've ever seen. But um, I'd like to, uh, rather than actually set it up, uh, I want to just play it, but it's going to take me a minute to find it, and then I will uh, drop it into the into the video. But um, I think I think there is a, you know there are uh, 37 industrialized countries in the world. 36 mm-hmm. have gun control, and it works extraordinarily effectively. Now I keep getting told that there are stabbings in some of those other countries. Yeah, we have stabbings here too, um, but it's hard to commit mass murder with a Bowie knife. Um, It's doable, but it's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. And while I admit that the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, I freely admit that. I've said that repeatedly. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, period. I agree. That is, in my opinion, deliberately missing the point which is I think the bad guys shouldn't get the guns <laughs> in the first place. And uh, I've been told that that can't be done. That's what they said in Australia, and they did it. Um, I, I think I love how people are sitting there going, oh, you know, th- these are the same people who tell me I'm unpatriotic because I think America can't accomplish this or can't accomplish that. You're telling me we're too stupid to figure out how to get the guns from the bad guys? We can't figure that out. We land a man on the moon, but we can't take away the guns. Australia did it. They had guns uh, uh, nearly as many yeah. as we did, and they did it. Uh, I, I have more faith in Americans, and um, I don't know what these unpatriotic jerks are who sit there and say that we can't accomplish that, but I think we can. And the um, the idea of that, the idea is, okay, we want to make sure the good guys have guns. Okay, fine, you're making it easier for the good guys to have guns, but you're also guaranteeing that every bad guy who wants a gun can get one. I think that's a bad policy. Um, I, I, I don't understand why that's in contention. Um, and th- we know well, that's a bad um, policy because I mean, of, of the history. Yes. I mean, the big, the big thing that uh, people like to bring up is, um, the idea that, you know, um, one of the first things that a tyrannical government does is disarm the, um, the populace. That's, uh, yeah. that is the biggest, um, uh, argument that I hear uh, most often. I don't think I come down quite as hard on the gun control issue as you do. I take a, I think a a more middle ground stance where I think that there are ways to um, make policy that would make uh, guns much more difficult to be put in the hands of um, 
you know, bad guys while still allowing for, uh, for gun rights to be, uh, preserved. And, um, I know that's a topic for a different show, but I think that'll be, uh, I think that'll be an interesting one for you and I to get into. Um, yeah. And we actually, we already have that one scheduled too. I wish I could bring up the calendar that I had the date. Actually, I could, I could use one of these other, other things, but I do want to bring up this clip. Somebody else in the, in the live chat here did point out, they said, okay, um, what was it? Uh, Australia doesn't have free speech, um, and it's not next to Mexico. <laughs> God, it's hard to know uh, where to go with that one. Uh, first of all, they do have free well, speech. It's, it's kind of true. Uh, well, they do have. Well, free no, speech. they have. Uh, there are some places in in. I would say that they don't, considering there are still some places that blasphemy laws are on the books in Australia. I do not consider that free speech. Uh, well, I Hell, agree. Ireland just barely repealed their uh, blasphemy laws, and there are blasphemy laws still on the books in Canada. There are sodomy laws in the books in the U.S. Does that mean we're not a free country? I'm I'm just saying though that that uh, I think blasphemy is is beyond um, uh, uh, blasphemy laws. I think are. Um, beyond just sodomy laws, especially since uh, uh, sodomy laws, um, while uh, aren't necessarily speech. Now, now I think that they're stupid, and I think that they should be abolished. And I think if you tried to enforce them, that fortunately, um, what would end up happening is um, it would be contested in, um, in, uh, uh, contested in the Supreme Court, which is something I I would really like to see happen. To be quite honest, um, to get rid of some of those stupid laws. But um, when you specifically have blasphemy libel as something that the government can bring up against you, I think that's a I don't know. I think that's a really really awful thing. They have they have a bastardization of free speech, but um, you know just recently with the um, to give you an, exa- an example, with the with the um, uh, uh, they there there are uh, things like video games that can't be sold in um, in uh, Australia. There are uh, censorship laws on media in Australia that aren't just like what can be broadcast. I'm talking about what what you can actually even bring into the country. They are incredibly hard on any image of uh, drug use or anything like that. So, so I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> Well, I, I want to say the live chat is siding with you, which is is awfully suspicious I, I, of our I, I wouldn't crew. consider them a free speech, not even a little bit. I, I, I am suspicious of this live chat. I'm just saying. I don't. I, they're, <laughs> they're agreeing with you. That's that's concerning. Um, so, uh, well, and we've got a couple Aussies in there, and I, I do think they're more qualified than I am. I will say, so I haven't looked at it, so it, they, and it seems like they feel like they, they know things that I don't, and um, that's often the case, so I'm, I'm more than willing to be educated about it, because it's most when I think I understand another country that I realize I don't. So I'm, we, we, got, we got Aussies in the live chat telling me that, uh, you're right and I'm wrong. What I will say is um, most of the examples you gave, we also really do have in the U.S. in one way or another, which is sort of the, the point about the anti-sodomy laws. We also do have, uh, we have uh, hate, uh, we don't prosecute hate speech. We do prosecute hate crimes. And um, so we do have you know, our own restrictions and, and, and not necessarily on free speech as much, but I do, I did want to sort of point out we have restrictions on behavior and we consider ourselves a free country. Right. Uh, but there are countries, you know, we, a, a marijuana is actually still technically, it's a federal crime, it's illegal. Um, certainly it was a Schedule One substance up until recently and we call mm-hmm. ourselves a free country. So that be, even though there are exceptions, and I will admit your exceptions do sound more than trivial um it still is one of those yes i know you live okay so i said we have aussies i said i literally said we have aussies in the live chat and they are correcting me and siding with you and the first (laughs) one to do it stands up and says well i'm an aussie so i know what i'm talking well who do you think i'm talking about (sighs) live chats 
I don't know. Yeah, I just want to put well, there's an argument going on in chat about uh how um feet, about yep, how yep. um you know uh some people don't think that that uh, you could stand up to the government um uh you know in a rebellion and um unvarnished is saying of course you could someone's saying they've got the nukes they're not going to uh, unvarnished they're not going to nuke uh their own country and let's let's be clear this government no government is going to nuke their own soil to to put down a rebellion um other weapons perhaps nukes not going to happen but we also can't forget and i'm not usually a we're gonna really rebel kind of guy but we can't forget that the people who make up the military are people too they're not robots there's only so much the government will be able to push them into doing but the more um um and, and it really depends you know on how on um the culture of the country like you go to a place like china you can see what 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 happens where uh, the government is almost a a state religion. We don't have that here, at least not yet. Um, we have a a country that prizes individual liberty and individual oh, yeah, you're, freedom. You're, you're breaking up, and I don't yeah. think that's um, just so. A, we we have a country that prides itself on individual freedom. Is sounded like um, what you said, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, on on individual hyper individualistic. Did you get that? I did not. Uh, part of that may be what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to cut some of the uh, bandwidth overhead here. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. That's maybe part of the problem. And then, oh, um, uh, my computer is getting a little. Long. There we go. And then, of course, right as we were about to go live, I um. Coming decided, through better now. It is now. Yep. Say is is, um, you know, we are a country that we don't worship the government, at least not yet. Um, <laughs> we kind of worship hyper individuality, and um, I don't see that our current military would be so brainwashed by any administration that they would be weaponized against their own citizens. I mean, a certain portion would, but we have to remember that these are people too with families and friends and who value this country as well. So the, the concept of a rebellion isn't as absurd Third, as people like to point, uh, like to, to pretend that it would be. Um, yes, the military has the planes and the tanks and all that stuff, but how many of the military would be willing to slaughter, you know, their own citizens to put down a re uh, to put down a rebellion in this country, not in a country where the leadership is a you know practically a a god figure. Well, and I've heard. Um... I, I think I, I've made similar arguments, and usually the counter I hear to that is what they're really talking about is a generation from now. So we, we have to have our guns today to protect ourselves from um, from the uh, you know a, a, a tyranny and some unknown tyranny in uh, uh, some possible unknown tyranny in the. Um, uh, future a generation from now and one I, listen I, uh, I I think every human being needs to be given every American citizen needs to be given ten thousand dollars to protect ourselves against the you know future uh, apocalypse and, the, mm -hmm. and, the, and so we can spend it now and have a good time and I think that's what I mean you can you can make up a million could happen in a generation from now I'm not swayed by sure. the, the power of that argument and the truth is <clears throat> if the u.s military does decide that it wants to um come after you i don't think there are too many weapons that you can get legally today that you can have that's going to repel the u.s military especially when they've got drones and I, th there's the the ones that fly you know um thousands of feet in the air but there's also the ones that they've got the small hunter seeker drones that can you know go around corners and shoot things without sure. I, in, unless you've got that kind of um uh 
stuff at your disposal, I, there isn't a whole heck of a lot I that actually, I'd see anyone doing against the military. I don't know. I, I actually disagree. If you're talking about a, 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 here's the thing. At that point, the military becomes an occupying force. If we're talking about this, a state of act, true rebellion, right? Yeah. Um, it depend that, at that point it comes down to um, determination because um, um, history shows that after a certain number of the population um, is is killed in any struggle, um, that oftentimes the will to fight that uh, battle um, publicly wanes or diminishes. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, the um, you have to remember again that these military people, they still are, you know, people. A subset of them is are not. Uh, I don't know how many, but uh, depending on the situation, of course. But a subset of them are not going to just, you know, wantonly murder their 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 neighbors and family. Some of them are going to. Uh, um, um, you know, defect. Some of them are going to join this, you know, um, this uh, uh, this rebellion that we're, you know, uh, uh, thought uh, experimenting up in our heads. And we have seen that protracted um, um, occupying forces have a very, very difficult time holding on to territory people that they are occupying um, decide to continually resist. We've seen it with Ireland. We've seen it. Uh, we've seen it with um, the Goths. We've seen it with um, uh, we've seen it with even um, uh, 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 in uh, Afghanistan. We've seen it all over the world where an occupying force, unless they can, I mean, and I mean, really put down, the population to the point where they're just willing to accept brutal um, rule. They typically, if they're willing to continue the fight, that is a very difficult, um, you know, population to remain in control of. Um, that is a fair point. I think it sounds a bit like what you're arguing. I think this is a fair argument, and I'm still looking for that clip, and I thought I found it, and of course I didn't. Um, but it, what you're, it, I, I think what you're arguing is a bit more that, you know, in the margins. Um, I mean, if it's, if mm -hmm. it's, if the, if the U.S. government really decides it's, it's going to, uh, I mean, in, it depends on how many people are rebelling versus how many are are actively engaged in the military. How how serious, how bad the military wants it. And so, when you add up all of these things, suggesting that having an armed population is going to guarantee success of the uh, resistance is is obviously ludicrous. And it, it sounds like that's the argument they're making, but well, I think what you're saying is that's not really the argument. Um, the argument is it, it's a contributing factor and it helps and is more likely to allow a resistance to be successful. Yes, no, maybe. Right, not only that, but it, um, you know, a, yes, yes, no, that is, that is absolutely it. And any lawmaker who decides that they want to become fascistic, let's say, is going to have to, this is the argument that I've heard quite often, is going to have to keep in their mind that this population is an armed population. If I do too much, if I go too radical, if I piss off too many people, that is something I will have to contend with. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to follow um, Puffalopicus here. We're cutting the feed. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. Too many, too many people are agreeing with you. This is, this is, <laughs> This is you. You just own the live chat. I've, I apparently I have no say. We're cutting the feed. Um, so speaking of tyrannies, if I, you know what? If I can't be tyrannical, tyrannical on my own channel, wait. Are you armed? Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am not armed at this. point. Okay. Okay. At this moment. At the, okay. Okay. That sounds suspiciously like you could get. 
with us in a few seconds if you needed to. So I think we'll keep the feed going for now. That's just what I'm thinking. Cause... Okay. Does Airsoft count? <laughs> sure. We'll give it to you. Um, okay. Oh, well, cool. um, da, 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 da. Let's see, um, uh, does the knife that my, uh, that my uh, um, uh, son forged for me for Father's Day, does that count? Oh, put, uh, put that up. Uh, put that up closer. You are you are back so that everyone can see you. So put that up really nice and close. That oh, that is who your son made that for you. I I don't know whether to be impressed or scared. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He is apprentice to a blacksmith, and he is studying now to become a uh, firefighter. Uh... This is the son. Um, I know we've talked that uh, survived cancer. Oh, yes, yes. Um, uh, all right. So now, uh, let's see. Puff said, I have something to add to this topic. It appears that alt-right and uh, manga tees are pouncing on this shooting as further justification for a race war in clothed language. Well, um, Puff, why don't you, if you can send either myself or Angsgar um, a, any links to uh, tw uh, tweets that you find that say that, we would be very interested, I think, in seeing that. Speaking of politicizing oh, sure. right away <laughs> off the, oh. Uh... Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all, to be honest. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are going to want to turn this into um, you know, white versus black, uh, you know, black versus non-black or whatever they want, which is just so dumb. It is. Um, I, I, there was a, um, I, I think I would like to, um, that's why if Mikey was still in the, in the live chat, but no, Mikey bailed. He's too good for this. He's too good for our, our, our chat here. Um, but uh, you know we're going to have this discussion on race, and I, I told uh, well I told a couple stories. I, I can maybe save them for it. Well, let me uh, make one more s uh, significant attempt at finding this thing that I'm looking for. I will let that search. I um, race is an interesting topic. It's also <laughs> that difficult topic mm -hmm. to discuss for a wide variety of reasons. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I was asking about the Etsy store if you have one. Uh, no, he does not have an Etsy store. Um, he does uh, not. It, it's not an easy topic to discuss, but I, I went to a very affluent high school. Oh, oh, oh. oh the squad yes, have safely evacuated the two uh, uh, officers that were in the house. Oh, now that is how you do it. <laughs> That's... Yeah, nice. this is, well, this is kind of what you were saying, too, and uh, then that is true about the tone, too, when they said, well, they had their asses handed to them. Nobody knows what happened, and anything can happen when you go out there. It sounds like somebody, a third uh, or uh, 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 another party attacked them when they came in, so there's no way to know how or why. So I, I agree that the um, the framing of that previous tweet that we've been talking about was was really kind of offensive in that in that sense, even if one might agree with the sentiment. But that is how professionals do it. That's uh, nice. So they've got yeah, yeah. they got them out. Um, so ostensibly now it's no no like, word on if they got the guy yet. Yeah. Um, it sounds no standoff continues. They've got them, but the standoff yeah, continues. That was that was going to be my my guess. Um, yeah. All right. I'm, uh, so I, I went to a reasonably affluent high school, and. Um, and uh, for the most part, all white community. And um, uh, mm -hmm. there was a busing program from the inner city, Boston, really the, the gang neighborhoods into our um, school. And uh, every day, a, a, a bus brimming with inner city um, uh, kids, uh, all of them um, uh, uh, black students, um, would come to the school and, uh, you know, be subject to uh, our blessings of getting uh, this, this marvelous education, which I do think they were, they were being, in one sense, given an opportunity that obviously they couldn't otherwise have. But I don't know how you take advantage of that opportunity. I um, <clears throat> remember 
Um, you know, there were there were fights in our school, but two thirds of the fights that we had would involved the one of the those students from the the the, the black students. And so I rem remember distinctly. I, oh God, I remember this like it happened yesterday. I remember one of my my teachers who I had really liked. Uh, said, well, you know, Nick, um, I'm not racist. <laughs> Always, whenever, whenever it starts, I'm not racist. You know, like you Fuck. know what's coming next. <laughs> it's gonna be really bad. <laughs> That's just a red flag yeah, for him. Yeah. I'm about to say something really stupid. Um, he said, well, you know, I'm I'm not racist, but you know, I'm just pointing out that you know most of the fights in this school are, are you know with the, uh, the it was called a, the medco program so you didn't want to say a black kid it was the, it was the medco kids um and I, I remember sitting there saying you know um uh it's true uh and that is how you know once again there's lies damn lies and statistics um it, that's true but I'm, I'm sitting there going, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I was a freshman or sophomore in high school, and it doesn't take a lot for me to figure out that if I came, and one of these, I, I was friends with a number of them, and this was the first time I really encountered and realized what it was like to have two cultures in this country, that we could live in the same country and have such different lives. And one of them, one of them was talking about his brother who was in a gang, and he had been with his brother mm -hmm. on some of these these activities and he remembers the cops coming up to them and handing them weapons and saying these can't be traced uh you're you're the but the man who just oh, wow the the guy who just killed your buddy yeah his whole gang lives in that building right over there have a nice night boom gone and I, I didn't believe any of this at first but there there was a similitude to it you can you know you can tell when you're hearing um these kinds of things and and you know there's too much detail you're sitting there going like you know and they they can tell the story as someone who's lived it and it was just so hard to and later again my father was a criminal defense attorney so i'd heard stories of where you know the cops would say yeah during during um especially when the the mafia was a problem uh they just sort of as long as they weren't taking out civilians it was sort of like anything you can do to help them kill each other hey great um and uh you know, so these guys, the only people who, the, the real problems they have are the problems back at home. And, you know, the problem of getting your yeah. school work in on time really is insignificant to how you're going to uh, stay alive. And when you go to school, you get looked down on by these people. Who, We're giving you this golden opportunity. And why can't you recognize <laughs> how awesome we are for doing this? And why aren't you, why don't you appreciate us more? And I remember coming out of the, the, yeah. the, the school once and a, a girl I knew was sitting on the steps sobbing. She was just, oh, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. And her, her friends are all around her and um, the, 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 the kids are loading onto the Metco bus and they're all kind of like, what's wrong with that white girl? And um, they're getting onto the bus and I, 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 I want to know what it is. So I'm eavesdropping. Mm -hmm. uh, which I would never do. Um, it was I actually I dropped one of my books and it was just taking me some time to get it into my bag. Um, and I'm trying to find out what what mm -hmm. was wrong because she she was devastated and I, I it, it was one of the few times I'd ever seen someone that broken up and and um, I'm like it's okay it's okay and she's like uh, the, I found out what the problem was the problem was that she had been given the wrong color BMW for her 17th birthday. Um, that, oh, God. Was, that was the problem. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I, I, I remember she's literally these, these, these Mecco students who are going to go back on the bus to their gang war um, uh, schools or so their gang war homes. And um, that's her problem. That's her biggest problem. And, and she was destroyed by it. And I, I remember saying to myself, okay, if you take me and put me in their life and all my friends are white and I'm in a white community that's an inner city gang, gang neighborhood and I'm going to these wealthy, rich black people's homes or uh, neighborhoods and they're going to bestow their education on me, um, I'm going to have some fucking attitude. I'm going to have some real fucking attitude. <laughs> this, this isn't, this isn't, uh, yeah. and, and I'm sitting there going, um, you know, if they're, 
I'm just like, and it doesn't take, why is it as a sophomore in high school, I can figure this out, but I got one of my teachers sitting there going, well, all the, all the fights are with the black kids. Yeah, there's a reason. It's got nothing to do with the color of their skin. But, right. Um, yeah. All right. So let's, um, yeah, I found, that, I found um, the clip. Yeah, go, go, and I'll finish loading this. Uh, I was going to say, you know, we, we've, we've seen time and time again, this has everything to do with, uh, um, you know, crime rates are have more to do with poverty than anything else. Yep. And and there's a reason that um, and I have I've heard the argument, too, and I'm sure you have as well. Well, you know, yeah, but there's more black pe people in poverty than whites, especially as a percentage of the population. Yeah, but there's a historical reason for that. And there seems to be this. I, what blows my mind is I remember when Barack Obama was elected. I worked hard to help get him elected. I was a, a member of the campaign, but there was no illusion in my mind that this was going to end race difficulties in this country. It was a nice step forward, but it wasn't a huge galactic thing a step forward and it was it was it was sure it, it, it was a it was a decent size step and it was important and it, it just had to be done but um i made no illusions that this was ending uh race wars in, in our country or anything like that or race wars i'm sorry just uh, uh, uh you understand what i'm saying race um the the the, the disagreements Racial that are, tensions. So, yes thank you um so uh but there are people who think it should have and that somehow that means that uh, everybody's uh, back on or back they never were on uh, they are now on equal footing as if there isn't institutionalized i mean every three or four years cbs abc nbc somebody does an undercover thing where they send uh, a white guy and a black guy with the same resume out to go apply for sometimes even the exact same job with that with the same company just do it on different days but they got the same resume they apply at the same bank to get a loan they apply and even with all the other statistics the same they uh they get a higher interest rate if if they're uh, a, a person of color they are more likely to not even get a call back no matter how qualified they are if they're a person of color and then you add up all of these things when you're trying to get a car loan a home loan when you're trying to pay off your credit cards you know if, you, it gets back to you had mentioned earlier about this sort of bootstrap fallacy where hey you can you know and white people we all pulled ourselves up from our bootstraps yeah. I'm sure somehow <laughs> so why can't oh god well the pro the thing is though is is uh, people seem seem to forget too that this isn't uh, um, uh, uh, this isn't simply I think we may be offline. Oh no! Now we're live. Okay, my my broadcast just wasn't live for some reason. No, um, um people seem to uh, uh, seem to forget too that this isn't just a thing that affects, um, uh, specifically you know, uh, uh, black people in America or or Hispanic people or or any uh, uh, one group. You know, you go to some of the most rural, horrible, you know. You know places to live in America that that are predominantly white, and you still have these same crime problems linked to um, uh, linked to uh, 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 you know poverty, and and the, 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 this intense poverty creates desperation and 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 creates a sort of checking out of the system where people they just they don't care about uh, uh, uh you know these 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 silly little things like uh you know laws when they're <laughs> trying to uh uh scrape by to survive um and so it's not as though we can't look at microcosms in in our own country um, and see that this really is an actual thing. Um, and one of the things that I that I really hate um, is people often think of uh, America as this homogenous collective, right? Like um, um, the experiences that this person experiences over here are um, analogous to what everyone goes through all over the country. And, um, you know, growing up in California, um, I have lived places where walking four blocks, four literal blocks, is like walking into a completely different world. 
completely different world. Um, I have lived in two different cities where, where, you know, even the way the police will treat you, the way social services are handled, everything is like a totally different world. And I know we're going to talk about that on another show at some point. Um, but I think people get too caught up in saying, this is what America is like. And they're not really paying attention to the whole story of America. Um, you can go to, uh, I've got family in places you can go to, and it is every much, I mean, it is a picture. You could, you could, you could take it, these places, and you could put them, you could like, you know, superimpose them over the worst, most crime ridden, you know, black neighborhoods, and they're almost identical, except the people just happen to be white. You know, um, there's now there's less of those places. But they um, exist. Our resident Aussie um, was talking about the, the you know, it's the same thing they, you know, with the Aborigines. Uh, well, I, he didn't say Aborigines. He said the natives there. I assume that that's Aborigines. But I, I I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, now I got to back off on pretending I know as much about Australia as I do. So, um, um, but, um, oh, and I just realized I probably put that in the wrong, of course. Um, all right. Um, well, there was there there was somebody in the live chat, and I want to uh, capture that. But once again, I'm I'm um, doing. I found the piece that I wanted to show, and I'm I'm getting that up right now in the main window. I don't know if you can see the live chat. Somebody was talking about. Um, oh, somebody sent me something. Um, oh, uh, Discord DMs through Twitter. So let me. Um, get that in a second first i would like to oh that actually worked surprisingly well i'm always impressed when tech well, i'm not impressed but i'm surprised when technology works it's not something anyone ever <laughs> really expects right um so uh let me put that up there and then, oh, that's the wrong frame. That's why we got CNN, and really nobody wants to see CNN anymore. So we, we've got a few uh, questions in the live <laughs> I'm chat. I'm sorry, it's a take that made me chuckle. What Somebody did? said um, another shooting, uh, just a take, quick take on Twitter that made me chuckle. Another shooting, let me guess, they're going to blame Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> it's a video game. Oh, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. It just it's 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 funny to me because you know for a while there you were really starting to hear these arguments come out of the left that it's oh it's video games it's video games and now Trump is it's video games. <laughs> come on, it's not the video games. We've already got enough studies. Shut up about the video games. Let's oh, that, find another. Yeah, yeah there, there was a study on. Um... Uh, learning people who uh, how does stress influence learning and people who are put are constantly put into a fight or flight response have their ability to learn reduced by about 80 percent um, and uh, you know ro that's rote memory that's kind of any kind of you you can't learn new things you're there all you know how to really do is survive that's all you've got so when you've got mm -hmm. kids who are spending um, their uh, a, a part of their day in these terrible uh, situations, they're not going to uh, be able to retain facts. They're not going to be able to learn new things. They're not going to be. I mean, it's not. And this is why, again, it's it it you have to deal with the socioeconomic implications. It's not just about sending them to new schools. It's not just about um, affirmative action or any of these things, which are all well-meaning. But they, For sure. you know, there's a lot of other difficulties that you have to deal with. You, you also have to get into the subculture because a lot of these people through um, uh, historical, you know, um, uh, uh, how should I put it, economic segregation, a lot of these people have culturally checked out of the system. You know, um, a 
a lot of I, I I've I've grown up with with friends from these neighborhoods, and a lot of the parents don't value education. They don't say, you know, they they have no trust in the system. They have no trust in the authority. They have no trust in the mechanisms that uh, guide our society, and um, that is a problem. You know what I mean? That is a real problem. And I'm not saying that there isn't a reason, a good reason for that problem existing, but yeah. it is a problem that needs addressing. You know, you, you can throw all the opportunities in the world that direction, but if if there's a a, a cultural checking out of the system, it's not going to help. Yep. All right. So um, in doing this, I found sort of one of the sources of, of some of the lag that I've been getting. So hopefully I'll be able to, it's going to take a little, a little time to uh, fix that. Um, oh, and I, I do, uh, before we continue much further, I would like to say that on top of just uh, being, uh, you know, a, a, a spectacular co-host who, you know, puts up with my with my sense of humor, <laughs> puts up with me, blaming it for everything, which is we we are we are doing uh, for people who are curious. Um, we we do have a contract, a written contract between him and myself. Uh, we are following the famed ninety five percent principle. He's doing ninety five percent of the work. I am taking ninety five percent of the credit. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, aside from uh, uh, being a spectacular co-host and, and uh, getting all of this stuff, uh, he did um, the uh, most of the graphics that you see on this. On this, and I just saw so one of the flickering of the bar up at the top that 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 light that goes across, which I just love. And you know, it's there's a lot of just spectacular detail that um, uh, is. Um, uh, oh, and I just got on my news up here too. Phil uh, Philadelphia, two officers evacuated. Um, so it's nice to know that that uh, we'll try as hard as I might, you've got all your news ahead of I do, uh, ahead of me. But that's because you're in California. Um, I'm on the East Coast, so I'm going to get all my news. I'm in California, you. and you're, and you're, and, and you're honestly, you're running the stream right now, so <laughs> it frees my hands up to search the news. Yeah, well, thank you. That's, and thank I'll, you for credit. I've, I've been working hard on all these art assets, assets and I'm not done. Um, I've got some more ideas and some ways, uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really liking the way this is all looking. Oh yeah, me too. I think this is well, and we were still, we were still doing upgrades to this when, when we did this lot. I mean, we were, this isn't, we weren't ready to go live yet and we're just like, no, well, we we're, we're, we're gluttons for punishment. Let's do it. This is what we say. We're gonna let's. We're yeah. This is this is smart. All right. Sink or swim, man. Sink or swim. Yeah. Um. <laughs> all right. So, well, people are, are, have been very good putting up with some of our our difficulties. Now, uh, my suspicion is that the audio on this is actually going to work, which would be really a shock. Um. So uh, I'm going to double check. This is an interesting uh, thing that Unvarnished just said. Um, and I'm not sure I necessarily agree with it. We're, we're very good friends. Police are not obligated to risk their life for you. They do not have to come to help you. How do you feel about that? That isn't true, actually. They're take, they've taken an oath um, to um, uh, uh, part of the oath, and I can, I can look it up. My guess is it's different state by state, maybe even district by district. But the oaths that I'm aware of, for mm -hmm. the most part, they are required to uh, if they uh, essentially, if they can exchange their lives for yours to to do that, um, I forget how the oath is phrased, but it, it it's it's pretty serious, and, and maybe it's been modified recently. But last I heard, um, they are there to protect and serve the um, civilian population, and that includes, but is not limited to putting themselves in harm's way in exchange for a civilian, if if possible, not not just in a hostage situation, not just formally, but informally too. Right. Um, that, that's how I understand it. We can we can look that up, and that may be worth looking up. So this is this is we were talking about gun control, and you had um, uh, posited an argument, which I'm not sure you necessarily believe, but I do like the argument. It's probably closest to my representation of it. I think you and I have somewhat uh, different mm -hmm. views, not that different, but uh, but certainly somewhat different. But uh, you put yeah, my argument, I thought, very well. So I appreciate that you put my argument very well. And what I said was that I had actually, the best I had ever heard it was from a TV show. Now, this is this is that TV show. So it's up here. It's called The West Wing. And it was uh, written by Aaron Sorkin. It's one of my favorite writers of all time, actually. Mm -hmm. I just, I, just a spectacular writer, uh, phenomenally um, undervalued. 
the, the West Wing, he did the first five seasons of that all by himself. He was the only writer on it for all intents and purposes, uh, which just shows you amazingly how good he is. This is a segment from uh, the West Wing. It is the beginning. It's the first episode of season two. The 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 show is about it's um uh, uh, Steve uh, Steve Martin no um uh, Martin Sheen plays uh, President Josiah Bartlett, President of the United States, and um it's about sort of the the background uh, workings of of the West Wing, which I uh, being a, a political wonk, I enjoyed the show. Um, in the end of the first season, he gets shot, and uh, he is taken to a hospital. One of uh, his chief of staff actually isn't shot, but the deputy chief of staff is also shot. Um, uh, a number of people get shot and injured in just this, this hail of gunfire. And this is the White House press briefing. Um, immediately after that, and this is the first episode of the second season of The West Wing. I think captures the argument beautifully, so let's play that, and hopefully people can hear it. Secret Service agents carry a weapon called a 357 Sig Sauer. The agents on the roof shot the two gunmen with 726 caliber rifles that are referred to as JAR, which, believe it or not, stands for Just Another Rifle. They're made specifically and exclusively for the Secret Service. I wanted to mention something. Leo? This is our fifth press briefing since midnight. And obviously, there's one story that's going to be dominating the news around the world for the next few days. And uh, it would be easy to think that President Bartlett, Joshua Lyman, and Stephanie Abbott were the only people who were victims of a gun crime last night. They weren't. Mark Davis and Sheila Evans of Philadelphia were killed by a gun last night. He was a biology teacher and she was a nursing student. Tina Bishop and Belinda Larkin were killed with a gun last night. They were 12. There were 36 homicides last night, 480 sexual assaults, 3,411 robberies, 3,685 aggravated assaults, all at gunpoint. And if anyone thinks those crimes could have been prevented if the victims themselves had been carrying guns, I'd only remind you that the President of the United States was shot last night while surrounded by the best trained armed guards in the history of the world. Back to the briefing. She's good. I always like that clip. Yeah. I don't know. Um... There's a 50-50 the sound actually played through on the will will No, it out. did. I was I'm watching I, I turned on the live sound just to make sure. Oh, all right, wonderful. All right. Um Yeah. Okay. Um so so um uh what would you think? Uh, Varnish had some interesting uh, thoughts. She even said that the uh, court ruled that um officers do not have to put their life at risk to protect you um uh what would you think about in the future having her on an episode to talk about this particular kind of issue with her sure i think that's a, a good idea um so okay. let's uh if she wants to uh, contact okay. you on twitter and you want to get that um yeah we're, we're friends so oh okay yeah that'll be easy wait wait uh, we're gonna have a friend of yours on yeah Oh uh, boy. Um, well, I'll have to I rethink. Know. I know. Well, she may, she may, she may still be good people. I suppose <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I mean, to be fair, you're one of my friends. So, uh... <laughs> wow. You know, I never thought of that. I'm, I may have to reevaluate <laughs> some life choices. Um, I am, and a proud one. I am, and a proud one. All joking aside. So, um, all right. So, where do we Absolutely. stand on this anyway? So still, um, uh, first of all, um, uh, or, or where do we stand on the, the situation at the moment? Yeah. So it looks like everything is still the same. Uh, the last, uh, uh, the last that we heard, um, 
the officers have been removed. It uh, uh, it remains an active uh, scene. However, let me see what the last thing the actual police said because they've been giving some pretty good updates. Twelve minutes ago, all six officers who have shot have been released from area hospitals. One really? officer is being admitted for industry in injuries sustained in a vehicle crash related to the incident. Some situation remains active and ongoing. So the worst injuries, strangely enough, in spite of the shooting, were from the uh, car accident <laughs> the car caused car. by the shooting. Statistically <laughs> speaking, there is a lot of truth in that, actually. I said, that is the one the gun, the gun guys uh, have on their sides, which is cars really do. We lose 32,000 people. Um, no, actually, now I think it's about 42,000 a year to car car accidents. Yeah. So basically, all right. So I think, I think, I think what we need to... Um, uh, probably acknowledge at this point is that if you want to help people, um, you should become a police officer. But if you want to do something really dangerous, drive your kids to school. <laughs> yeah. World's dangerous job driving. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, let me see. Uh, I'm going to um, try. It, it, it's funny. Uh, there are still uh, some elements of this layout that, uh, you know, are kind of in the way because uh, I was, you know, I, we, we've been testing the layout. I, I was a little nervous about whether we'd be ready tomorrow, and we weren't supposed to go till tomorrow at 2. Um, and I, I was ready. I was nervous about whether or not we'd get this ready by then. And um, now... Um, it's it's a <laughs> here we are we're we're alive, and um, yeah. uh, so it's hey I got my little uh, plastic T Rex skull ready. You got so a, you know that's what's important here. Well that that oh I, I yeah think my I little plastic T Rex skull see nice yeah right here. Did I tell I'm you about Mike? Yeah. I'll yep I'll have to tell you about the um a, a buddy of mine played a. a, a a prank on Kent Hovind. He didn't mean to, but he, you know, it did a on April Fool's. It was April first. On April first, you gotta anticipate that. But on April first, he had um, um, a uh, uh, what is it? Um, on April first, he he published to he's a uh, uh, the head of the New Mexico uh, Skeptics for Reason and Science, and on. April 1st, they found a, a full Velociraptor um, fossil. Full, the full thing. It nice. looked exactly like it was out of, uh, of um, like, uh, da, 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 Jurassic Park. And it was like, Arr! and it had its, its jaws around the legs of a hominid. Uh, just a, just a, like a caveman mm -hmm. who's sitting there going, ah! and he, it's the full fossil of him too so it's a it's a fully fossilized human being in this ah, pose with a a velociraptor clinching onto his leg and um again <laughs> key is the date they found it april 1st right um, so they published this and um mr hoven uh finds it and puts out the bat signal, tells everybody, that's it, evolution's over. We've got a velociraptor with its teeth on a person. Uh, we know for a fact now dinosaurs and human oh. beings lived together. And he just did, a, and about, he did this, he sent this out to 500,000 people. And um, about... What a freaking joke. <laughs> about... Um, uh, let's see, about, uh, uh, what is it, uh, two weeks later, he actually calls up my friend and says, you know, I'm, I'm going to sue you for fraud. So I, I, I believe that you didn't really find this thing. <laughs> and he's just like, I, I, I didn't find it. I, like, I recanted on April 2nd. Um, it's like, it, it wasn't fraud. It was an April Fool's Day prank. I was like, well, you made me look terrible. It's just like, nobody told you to retweet. We weren't doing this for you. We just put it out on the head of New, Me New Mexicans for Science and Reason. And, um, oh, Hovind was pissed. <laughs> he was really mad. Oh, that is hilarious. Oh, oh 
Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. So, oh, um, that that made that that made my night right there. That is, <laughs> that that is, is absolutely. Is, uh, yeah. So um. I, hey, I'm I'm. I'm Holy thrilled crap! That, that tweet. Yes, what? Up to three thousand. Up to that tweet. Up to three thousand uh, uh, retweets. Ten thousand. Over ten thousand likes. Oh, God. Yeah. So is this likely to wow. spur another round of police militarization across the country? I doubt it. Um, it it's curious. So uh, Puffalopagus asked if this is going to re uh, uh, if this is going to likely mm. spur a, a round of police militarization across the country. That's an interesting. That's an interesting. Uh, it is when people talk about gun control. The, the the straw man that people hit me with all the time is, well, gee, Nick, you're not against guns. You're just against certain people having guns. You don't mind the police having guns. I do mind the police having guns. I I put up with it because they. They have to. We arm our criminals and we arm our clinically insane, so we have to arm the police. So we don't really have a choice in the matter. But in England, the police are not armed. Uh, the police don't have a gun. So in the immortal words of Robin Williams, what they do is they say, stop, or I'll say stop again. Um, that's, uh, I, I think that's... <laughs> That's how, uh, that's how I'd like American police to be. And by the way, I think there's a huge percentage of the black population that agrees with me. Uh, arming the police probably is not a good idea as a general rule of thumb. You have to do that in the United States. You don't have a choice. Is this That doesn't answer uh, Puff's question. It's just sort of a, a, a setup to it. Um, the, um, the question... Uh, will this, uh, I mean, there are people who want to arm them more, and I sometimes am sympathetic to that. Um, I don't think this is going to necessarily be used that way, although some people will try to, to shoehorn it into that, but especially whereas it doesn't strike me that this guy was more heavily armed than most people. It doesn't strike me that he was armed beyond the capacity of SWAT. It strikes me that this was just a situation that people didn't see coming right away. And that always happens. You can't protect against that right. and having more, you know, you give every member of, of SWAT a howitzer and that's not going to stop surprises from happening. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I don't think any reasonable person is going to make that argument in this case. I think there are people dying to make that argument uh, at the next possible chance, but I don't think this is going to be utilized that way. Yeah, um, I mean, here's the thing. I have a huge problem with the militarization of police. I'm not a disarm the police guy, but I do think that uh, the police have become militarized, both in the way they train, the way they're armed. Um, they have, you know, um, armored personnel carriers. They've got, I mean, so th there, are, there, are, there are podunk towns with, you know, a population of uh, I, I'm way exaggerating, but eight people, and the officers there have a a um, you know armored personnel carrier. And it's like, what the <laughs> hell do you need this for? <laughs> Well, they do that. They um, do that for the. You know how the police have those things where they have the public can show up and ride in the police cars and sit in the back and stuff like that. They have that for the kids. There you know, you go, yeah. they're like, okay, kids. Now this is in case yeah. we have to occupy a small, you know, uh, uh, South American country. <laughs> this is what we use. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, I mean that that gets uh, uh, pretty. Uh, uh, pretty uh, freaking ridiculous, um, and so I'm not a uh, I'm I'm definitely not a fan of the militarization. Um, I think one of the biggest places where this militarization uh, uh, really comes forward is in the um, and I'm sorry about the noise outside. That's um, that's uh, my neighbors. They're going crazy right now for some reason. Um, but uh, yes, the, I'd say go the, over there and knock. But the they might put a cap. But they may put a cap in your ass. So just you know, don't don't, don't knock. If you're like, be quiet. You never know. Oh, just shoot you through the door. These neighbors are terrible. The they are um, very um, conservative Muslim, and we do have other Muslim neighbors that we get along with fantastic. But these ones absolutely hate us. Um, their kids will commonly throw things at our windows. Every time my wife um, is seen by them, they they yell, you know, horrible obscenities at her. Um, one of the uh, male members of the the family has threatened sexual assault on her. Uh, they they are absolutely horrible. Yeah, 
yeah, they're they're bad. And then right in the same building, this is what I'm talking about, like like multiculturalism, man. Right in the same building, there are um, you know, Islamic neighbors who are just some of the most beautiful, wonderful people you could ever know. They're sweet, they're kind, they're generous, they say hello in the morning, and you know, uh, uh, um so you know, <laughs> people, man, you know, some people just suck. Yep. All right. So this is, this is the other thing. So um, we, we had talked repeatedly about having a producer and I think there are any number of reasons to tell you the truth. I've been, I've been kind of enjoying this because I, I do like doing technical stuff, but I can't function as well. You can't function. I mean, nobody, you, you can't multiprocess. And I'd like to have, we've both seen shows that have, uh, one of the hosts producing, um, and you, you can't, you can't be a hundred percent that way. You can be eighty percent that way if you're really good at it. I'm not there yet, but you know, people who have experience doing it can. And that's one reason why I, I try to stay out of the live chats too, because it, it I, I'm not being my best when I when I'm uh, paying attention to the live chat. Right. But um, so we, we've been thinking about getting a producer, but there's another reason too, which is at some point because it is about ten thirty here on the East Coast, and I do need to get up early with my kids tomorrow mm -hmm. so at some point i'm going to need to leave and it's not necessarily right away but that's something that's coming up on the horizon and if we had a producer especially one in california who could stick around for another three hours with you that would be ideal but um and again that's not necessarily now but i do see that up in the horizon so um we'll have to yeah I, I don't know what we'll do i do have a dog we could put him in here um it, it you know who knows maybe excellent yeah I, hear, but you're, I know what you're thinking you're sitting there going well the conversation will get a little better um we'll put my my dog in the seat and, <laughs> um <laughs> i mean the uh it's got to improve the scenery right <laughs> Oh, thanks. yeah oh uh, well, what was that somebody had said uh you know if um it, uh, they they've done the, the, that poll. What is it? If uh, the following three three are president, or, no, the following three are on Jeopardy. Which one wins? Um, a cat? No, sorry, it was a monkey. Um, Donald Trump or a bubblegum mm -hmm. rapper? Um, okay. Yeah, and the answer was the bubblegum rapper, um, uh, because. The um, the the or no, you know what? I think it was the monkey. I don't remember. The last was Trump, and the reason is because the bubblegum wrapper at least isn't going to get any questions wrong, so it's going to be at a zero. The monkey isn't going to get any right, right, right. but it's just going to keep hitting the buzzer and buzzing in, and but it's not going to bet anything either. Trump is going to bet absolutely everything, take a stab at every single answer, and get all of them wrong, and then get pissed off and say no you're wrong and <laughs> fake news so he's going to be the only one in the <laughs> negative so basically it's going to be a tie between the monkey and the bubblegum wrapper <laughs> just saying <laughs> so maybe a dog could the, do my the, job i don't know the math holds up <laughs> yeah, exactly up. we did an official study uh so um well no i think you know, I'm, I think what I'm going to do is in uh, two or three minutes, I'm going to take a stab at really getting our calendar and anybody who has, has for some form of glutton for punishment has, has stuck with us all the way through uh, this entire uh, thing up till now, uh, cover what our schedule is because we are actually scheduled pretty well out for the next month. And uh, so yeah. co cover what the, uh, the tentative schedule is and our first show what's supposed to be our first show. Our first scheduled show is tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on, um, I know I, we mentioned this earlier, but it is on um, cancel culture and uh, sort of outrage culture. And um, Right. Yep, so that's going to be our, our first show. And then on, um, really there, there are, I think two regularly scheduled broadcast days a week, but there are, are sometimes when we're going to have a third. The uh, Thursday shows are for sort of big, big topics, uh, talking about culture, politics, big stuff like that. Um, the Tuesday shows, usually they're, they're still going to be big topics, but we're going to try to have on a guest uh, for those 
Thursday shows. Yeah, particularly, uh, particularly shows where we don't feel like our expertise is enough to uh, cover the topic properly. And that's and that's sort of what yeah I think that's a thank you for for interjecting that because I think that's important. So there are to, there are topics that we would like to discuss, where I'm just like, well, uh, you know, Ansgar, you're gonna you're gonna have to carry this one because I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, oh shit, <laughs> I was kind of expecting you to carry that one because I was like, oh oh, uh, this, this boat's gonna sink <laughs> fast unless we find somebody to make us look like we know what we're doing. So um, uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna have. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we uh, we we just sit there and say, okay, that's 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 gonna be a Tuesday topic, and the Tuesday topics are gonna be the topics that we really want to discuss, just as as much as any Thursday topic. But really, we need to have an expert in there to to uh, uh, an expert, somebody who knows more about it than um, than we do. Uh, when are you going to have the lawyer mm -hmm. on? Uh, that that's a uh, that's a pet project of mine. Um, I am planning on bringing a lawyer on to discuss some legal topics regarding a uh, legal issue that's been brought up on Twitter a lot. I have my own personal legal opinions. They are layman opinions, but they are an educated layman opinion. And in fact, I've, I've frankly already discussed it with a lot of lawyers and I keep getting the same answer, which is the opinion that I have. And it's probably because again, my father was a criminal defense attorney and this was, you know, I was really pretty close into an understanding of how this stuff works and um uh I, I you know i teach law and i i i there's also a difference between teaching it and, and practicing it. some very important differences but six lawyers in my family i you know i, I speak to all of them every, not all of them every day but i speak to at least one of them any given day I, you know what i'm saying um but m more importantly yes, I, yes. I, i've spoken to lawyers and said look this is my take on it what do you think and in general uh, not in general, universally so far. In fact, I've been on live streams and I've said, okay, I have a challenge. Is there a lawyer here who disagrees with my opinion on this topic? And I haven't found a single one that has. But doing those kind of straw and informal, I want to have a lawyer to discuss a, a reasonably salient topic on Twitter. Most people can probably guess what it is if they know anything about me, but nonetheless, I will wait until we actually get that lawyer. I reached out to a couple of lawyers who... Um, are experts in social media and who in fact often do broadcast on social media and podcasts and stuff like that to see if they would be willing to be guests. I have not heard back from either of them. If uh, both of them say no, I will uh, cast my net out further, but uh, that would probably be a Wednesday show. And then Wednesday is the, the third class of day. And the, the Wednesdays are for smaller topics. Uh, uh, in some ways it's a nice, interesting topic uh, because mm -hmm. I think we are going to be discussing law and we're going to be discussing larger issues but it's about a very specific issue that affects a smaller subset of people this isn't one of the big ones that we would normally discuss on um uh, uh thursdays or tuesdays so for our our our, our schedule uh, right now as it stands outrage and uh, cancel culture on thursday um the effects of social media on politics and cu culture and cheshire vic is going to be our uh guest and she was pleased to learn about that in our live chat <laughs> um, <laughs> um, like i knew i was gonna be on but i didn't uh, know the topic but i think she even said to be fair i didn't ask <laughs> well the problem is i like to look smarter than our guests and that's very hard to do when they know the topic ahead of time um so uh Right, right. We're going to be discussing an interesting one, and I'd like to have um, Ansgar actually explain this one uh, better uh, once I'm done sort of going over those. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll I'll finish the, the schedule, then we'll quickly check in and see if there's any updates. And if there isn't, uh, Ansgar will explain uh, this particular one. But this is going to be on superheroes. And the, the title is just superheroes. It's it's much more than just superheroes. This is, this is a... a um, I should probably actually fill out that description a bit more. There are a few that I, I like having a small, and actually I do think we've got, a, but that one is, is that deserves more in the title anyway. So I'm, I'm going to update that one tomorrow. Um, then the next Tuesday, it's racism and tribalism in the modern, in modern culture. Um, since we are both, last I checked, middle age or maybe older, Ansgar, um, uh, white men. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm, 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 I'm still twenties. Is twenty in here? Um, yeah. 
you will, well, yeah, but yeah, I got a lot more gray than you do. But um, we'll pretend. It's true. It's true. We'll pretend. I'm gonna. This is. I gotta. I gotta. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get like hair that dye. Fills <laughs> so uh, uh since uh, i don't think either of us are going to necessarily be um uh uh i don't think either of us are, are gonna be qualified to really um it's gonna be a one-sided conversation if we if we do that one so we do have someone in mind for that but i think we'll we'll wait and see if i can get a hold of them and get him on before we do that um then um and that's on the 27th, Tuesday, the 27th, on the 29th, uh, ostensibly, gun control, where we're going to be talking about a lot of the stuff that we've already sort of previewed, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Then, let me get the calendar to load up the next day. Uh, and then I suppose while it does that, the other the other point I could make is that the other the other thing that we do plan on doing is uh, covering any breaking news. Now, this was a, a, a reasonable sized uh, breaking news story, and I, I think we're going to have to decide what bar, because the two of us have to find a way to make ourselves available. We've got family, we've got um, other commitments. So I think it, it is going to be based on the, on the news story. But I think one thing we'd like to do is to be able to have a place where people can come and get the news and get it where we um, where we uh, have uh, where we can aggregate the news sources, we can uh, try to uh, filter out what is what's going on on social media, what's actually happening versus what can be confirmed to be said to be happening, and uh, have commentary take uh, user. Uh, or um, chat room questions and and sort of aggregate that all into a single show that hopefully our users find useful and we will be doing that live when there is breaking news uh, that is uh, again it's gonna have to be a reasonably sufficient um, national urgency because it, it it's difficult for us to necessarily attend but that is one thing too that we are going to be doing on this show uh, so these the, there's this schedule and then there's there's uh, what happens on a Saturday when uh, there's a, a national event uh, and you will uh, ostensibly you should find us here uh, broadcasting and discussing it so um, on September the 3rd, that's a Tuesday, we will be discussing um, polyamory and the death of, of modern marriage and um, uh, sort of the, the, the ethics and the practical and, and uh, well, practical and ethical, I suppose, implications of polyamory, open marriages and um, uh, stuff like that. I think, I don't know if we, uh, I think uh, polygamy may end up coming up, but I think that's also going to be a, a separate topic. Uh, that Thursday, um, the state of healthcare in the United States, that will be Thursday the 5th. On Tuesday the 10th, um, we're looking to do uh, the, the attack on the sciences. We have a, a very special guest in mind for that. We don't know if we can get him yet, but uh, it's sort of the anti-science culture uh, in the U.S. You see a lot of that in other places, too, but nowhere. The, the U.S., we're cutting edge when it comes to denying science. Um, <laughs> we really are. We are. Um, uh, Thursday the 12th, uh, the media oligarchy, um, the consolidation of basically all media into three super conglomerates and what that does for uh, our ability to get uh, unbiased information, which I, there's probably no such thing, but uh, as close to unbiased as possible, uh, what happens when you consolidate all media into roughly three major uh, media conglomerates. On, uh, Including the way we communicate publicly. Mind you, they're you know they're, yes. they're practically operating as our communication utilities. Um, yes, in fact, um, all, for the most part, almost all media organizations are are. Uh, I think it, it it's becoming pretty Machiavellian, with the exception of um, Google and its subsidiary property YouTube. I think that uh, YouTube is is a marvelous <laughs> organization and. Um, uh, I think that uh, they would never demonetize or or kick anyone off their channel without really good cause, and I stand behind them ethically as an organization. Ansgar, Ansgar, I'll keep a hold of your, keep a hold of yourself. If you do, if you have to look away for just close the monitor while I finish this, 
and we would never do anything to slight our parent networking company. And Ansgar agrees. <coughs> okay. <laughs> uh oh, I think I'm in trouble with this stream ends. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna cover and we'll be we'll, we're gonna cover all of it. Uh, the uh, media oligarchy. Yeah. That's Thursday the twelfth. Hedonism. That's the topic of uh, Thursday the seventeenth, and that's one that's just, that's a single word title. That just hedonism says it all. That's gonna be the seventeenth. Yes. Um, Tone policing is is the title. I don't really like this, but we're going to be discussing. It, it, it's not that different from. I think it's a different take from the, tomorrow's topic. It's it rough, in some ways it's the same topic, but from a different angle. Um, uh, those uh, media outrage and or um, the cancellation. Um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, but I think we're gonna we're gonna do it from a, a, a less of a global tact and a bit more of a sort of personal how do people sit here and use cries of tone policing or, or something else to try to ignore or mitigate criticism uh right. and we have some specific examples for that uh, we're still fleshing that one out that's more than a month away so some of these are, are still this is alternative but we, we we've got stuff planned um we have a, another interview planned for the 24th. Oh, ooh, we may not have. No, and I think that's actually all we have for our specific uh, plans. And actually, I, okay. I don't see anything new. So unless something's come up, I would like to have Ansgar explain the, um, the uh, topic that is a week from tomorrow. The one about superheroes, right? Yes. Okay, so this is actually a topic I think that you and I are, you being a philosopher and me being someone who is um, a fan of philosophy, but also very much into comics, um, uh, there's an entire generation of uh, children, um, well, now adults, that were raised um, with uh, comics and superheroes and we're going to be discussing the role that those uh, mediums had in educating on things like normative ethics and some of the um, more basic uh, uh, moral philosophies that were contained within those uh, mediums and um, um, I think that there is an entire generation of people that have been educated in some of the most basic of um, normative ethics and uh, moral philosophy just by consuming superhero media. Well, so that's what we'll be discussing. And I think I think it I think um, that it also there's a couple of questions that I'm interested in too, which is what drives what i mean is is why are we interested in in these superheroes what makes them a superhero and how uh what about religious superheroes <laughs> you know the the right the, um where do, where do we get some of our um beliefs in religion and and uh, i i don't mean to be uh, flippant when I say religious superheroes, like you know Jesus Christ as a superhero. But what I do mean, I, there are some in, in, in specifically in Hinduism. Um, uh, there is a bit more. I forget what his name is, the Blue Archer, um, but it, it is sort of this very heroic figure. We don't think of Jesus Christ as a hero, although I think some people, some Christians, would see him that way. Others would see that as a um, almost a. a well, yeah, d d d not diminutive, but it's certainly he's he's more than a you know you could, to call him a hero would be. A, but yeah. uh, anyways, I think, and I, I don't think that's going to be the central topic. But I think in my mind that's also part of, yeah. you know, superheroes I, I, really are our modern day mythology for sure. Uh, th th yeah, so that's how you you would put it that yeah, way that's... earlier, which I really liked the, the superheroes as as modern day mythology. I'm, I'm going to update the, the the superheroes as modern day mythology. I think that was how you had framed it earlier that I really liked. So I'm going to write it down right. here so I can forget to update the calendar and make sure I don't put it in. As, and there goes my Twitter. So give me one second. And there goes your. Huh? 
one one thousand. Oh Jesus! Uh, it's gonna be <laughs> one of those days, huh? Well, so here's the here's the thing I do too, which is I take um like this is like an iPhone three. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean that's what the you know this is this is an iPhone six, this is the iPhone three, and um, for the most part I don't get rid of old technologies. I'm just what? I, what? Yeah. Discovering the problem iPhone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I'm running Streamlabs off of my iPhone 3. I don't know why, but it's lagging like crazy. Um, I'm, just, I'm just saying, why buy twice the, uh, uh, twice the hardware for half the price when you can get a little Apple on the uh, back of your phone telling everybody what a status symbol you own? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> So yeah, um, I got I got the, the Samsung. Oh, nice. I I did for the longest time because mm -hmm. you know I jailbreak all my devices and it's much easier to jailbreak a um, or to root a droid than it is to really um, uh, sure. do it on an Apple. And but I mean an Apple isn't in my mind worthwhile unless you've rooted it. Um, it, it 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 it's it. The jail, the the lock they have on it makes it so much harder to do anything worthwhile. But I ended up with a, a Galaxy, uh, I think, of five when it was high end. By the way, um, and the Galaxy five had a couple of problems, not the least of which is the proximity sensor went off at two feet. So if I held it close enough to my face, it would, the whole screen would go black because it would think I'm holding it up to my ear and it would go black so that uh, you, you know, that's, you have a proximity sensor so that when you hold it to your face, you, but there was no way to change it. It was, it, it had two positions, two feet or closer or further away than two feet. That was, that was the only two positions that the proximity sensor could detect. And, um, that and a couple other just little problems that made my life. And so I, I never went back to the Samsung. I, I would much prefer that over an Apple product, but I've got these, I've got, um, uh, one is just sitting on my monitor here, permanently plugged in, and it just shows me the current status of a couple of different websites um, that I own. And I just that way, if one of them is down, I can I just I see it, and I just see this little graph, and the graph is flatlined. I was like, oh, it's down. And then the other one just vibrates whenever I have a tweet. That's how I'm sitting here testing this thing uh, earlier today. I was like, oh, you know, we're gonna test this, and we're trying to get it out the door, so we're ready which I've lost a couple hours of getting ready to doing this stream. <laughs> um, but uh, I was like, we're going to, we're going to try to be ready. Uh, and I'm testing this thing and I'm literally see on the CNN uh, blast right in the middle there. Uh, it pops up and shows, um, you know, six shot. And I was just like, Oh God, do I tell Ansgar, are we really going to do this now? Or are we going to wait like we should? No, nope, we're going to go. <laughs> no, nah, man. Jump in, feet first. Yep. So, um, just go for it. Yep. I think I think somebody uh, is making fun of my iPhone in the live chat. That's that's what I think. Yes, and rightfully so. What? Ex what? Excuse me. <laughs> Nobody gets me. Nobody gets me. All right. Um, I do think. Well, maybe, you know, it might be a benefit to actually having, uh, you know, different browsers. I usually use Chrome, but if I actually, well, no, I have a, a an old laptop here, and the the purpose of the laptop was to have the um, live chats or the the live stream, the back end on YouTube of the live of the live stream here so that it's not taking up cpu cycles on my main machine and then i can have one window that's always open that's just got the back end and um all that other good stuff but hey uh we didn't have oh, time to set that up geez okay so here's a picture this is actually kind of i don't i don't know what kind of social commentary this is, but this is social commentary so you can see the active police line right you can see the place that that you know where the police are watching yep. and there's a lady with a bunch of snacks on her head obviously going around selling snacks to all the people watching <laughs> the Whoa. active shooting that is just so 
Oh, you need to you need to screen that share is... that. You need to get that. Oh, that's insane. Okay, hold on. Let me let me. Is it easy for you to get it up on the screen? I'm just curious. Otherwise, uh, I can just what, screen share. Um, yeah, it's probably harder for you to send it to me again, especially the way this is set up right now, because it just wasn't set to do this today. Okay. Um, it's probably easier for you to. All right. All right. Let me let me let me see what I can do here. Um, and share screen and here we go. Oh my God. <laughs> she's got her little fanny pack for the money. She's got her snacks. <laughs> yeah, she does. I mean... She's got a little, and she's all proud of this too. She's, she's, yeah. she's doing the peace sign. She's like, okay, this is, this is, um, Wow. She's got some good snacks I don't know there. what M and M's. Like... Wait, I want to know where she she didn't. She, I hope the neighborhood's not so bad that she already had this stuff just waiting around because she's like, oh, there's gonna be a shooting at some point. <laughs> I'm just gonna when there is. <laughs> this is oh. this is my active shooting survival kit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make some money <laughs> off of it. You she's know? Got... Yeah, but I don't know if this is a commentary on capitalism or if this is a commentary on on um you know just how dull numb we are to shootings or I don't know what this is a commentary on but god damn it this is a commentary of some kind <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah whether it's a deliberate <laughs> commentary or not it's it's a, wow at least she's owning it you know what I mean yes, she's, she's just, I'm gonna work this yeah, totally. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna own this <laughs> I mean uh, or, or it could also be a commentary on when you're poor you don't have time to you know, give a crap about uh, everything else. You got to make some money. <laughs> oh wow! Well, we're probably just reading, you know what we're probably just reading too much into it. She's just like you know, girl. I just had this. Uh, I just I work at a, at a, <laughs> a, this, a store. We had this on. I was like, I'm gonna go make some money now. I got I got a I got two kids to feed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, but I would say even if it's unintentional, that that, that, that yeah. there's commentary in that photo. I, I love this photo. I just uh, I unironically absolutely love this photo. <laughs> we should keep a scrapbook um, of photos. We should. And I think I think um, the first that first one is definitely gonna uh, go go on there probably, especially after it's settled down a little bit. Maybe we can put that up. But this one also mm -hmm. definitely belongs there. Yeah, yeah for sure. We'll, we'll keep a scrapbook. <laughs> wow, I love it. Can maybe put it in the in the in the feed too. We're not or in the um one of the info boxes down there. Um, yeah. You know, I think I think I think for most of our regular shows, we're not going to be doing news. Uh, you know, we we're going to do right. whatever those topics are. So, you know, I've, I've said this before. Uh, I'll say it again for people who aren't uh, bored enough that they want to shoot me uh, in the in the live chat there. But you know, this is. I think we're, we're, we've got the scheduled shows and we've got the, the breaking news and we just decided to go with the breaking news a day early, really before we were ready to go live. Uh, we were in the process of testing the layout. We were literally in the process. The way I found out about the news story was I was testing the layout and the CNN ticker right in the middle of just poof, breaking news. I was just like, no, no, it didn't do that. It did. This is, there's something <laughs> wrong with this. This is, this is, it's broken. Control, alt, delete. Control Alt Delete. No, it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, no, I think I think overall, you know, a little bit by bit, we got the um the live chat up. We got the we stopped using copyrighted images and and music. That's good. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not a businessman, but I think uh, you want to try not to to use copyrighted images i think that there's something in the youtube yeah, I hear um, that's user. yeah that's that's what i've heard but you know who knows it's it's i i don't i i you see here's the thing i'm a philosopher i'm a professional at this i do not fall to like uh, fallacies like the bandwagon effect or or you know ad populism you know just because people say it's illegal doesn't mean argument from authority Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, the lawyers say you can get demonetized for it. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Hey, uh, one person dislikes what we do. 
Look at that. Nice. Oh, oh we wait. We got a dislike. We got one dislike. We got Twenty-five one dislike. likes. Oh well. One dislike. Can't one please... person dislikes us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a ticker. I don't know what the ticker is gonna be. I we had one in that was just gonna be the the, the patrons, but right now I have only one patron, so I was just like it's just gonna be his name going across the. I was like, but we should have a ticker either of the news. I mean, I think we can have different tickers for different situations too. I don't think we would want a live news ticker. I think we would want a live news yeah. ticker during this, although I, there is something to be said for. <laughs> there was one, one thing against doing a live news ticker while we're in a, a live news. And we're supposed to have a different background for this. This is our background for the main shows. Um, and I also like the fact that we're gonna have a different background for different show, uh, for the, the, the um, uh, shows that are breaking news because that way too, you can just by looking at the thumbnail, you know, if you're interested in seeing one of the regular shows, it's gonna have one of the regular backgrounds. If you see a red background, it's one of the breaking news shows. Um, but uh, the the we were testing different red red backgrounds, and I remember saying to myself, "Okay, you're going live. You can't use this this one that you're testing." And of course, it still stayed up there and went in, and it was the audio whatever. Um, so it was a uh, it was just one of the the test ones we're doing. This is this is what it's going to look like in in our our normal shows now. For the for the live shows, or not the live, for the breaking news shows, I like the idea of having a news ticker down on the bottom, but I dislike it slightly because that means we lose control over what goes out on the feed. So if there's right. if if we're talking about a hostage situation at a school, and we're all sitting here wondering what's going on, and then all of a sudden gunman just wipes out the whole school and kills himself, and that comes across the crawl on the ticker before. Ansgar or I know about it and you know we can't frame it right we can't prepare the audience we can't you know it's just all of a sudden out there uh, I would have a bit of a problem with that um, I think nine times out of ten yeah. it's a great idea to have that ticker out there I like the idea of that that way if you get in the unlikely event you're getting bored with what one of us is saying you can just go look at the ticker and you can you can you know see it and we do have the refreshing CNN uh, web page down there. So we're already pretty close to doing that. Um, so I don't know. I think Ansgar and I are going to have that discussion and we, we're not necessarily going to, you know, end it here or there. And I do think um, a, a scroll of the patrons or supporters would also be a very good idea because I think they are, we're just starting out, so there aren't many, but um, I think they're going to be very important to us and to this show. And I, I, I would be I, I kind of feel like it's a privilege to be able to say these are the people who are supporting us and we appreciate them. So we may have that as a scroll too. So I think we're going to have something, but what it's going to be and under what circumstances, I don't think we've decided yet. So I don't think we're going to get any more updates anytime soon. It sounds, I mean, I'm not seeing any more updates come through. Now it's just a whole lot of people talking about, you know, what we need to do in the future and you know that kind of thing i think that's the case i think we need to um uh so we can start to wrap this up uh i need to go get uh, my che uh, checks from uh the um a couple of um sort of those left-wing groups you need to get your checks from the uh, nra um you know our various sponsors right. corporate sponsors we each have see the real the real what we've actually done on this show here's what it is which is We've each gotten corporate sponsors, and they're just competing corporate sponsors. So we we get paid whichever side we land on. It's just one of us gets the you know. So, um, if one of these days I want to say a joke like that, and be, I gotta be a little, my sense. Of, I have a very dry sense of humor. Mikey was, um, uh, Mikey's a friend of mine, and he was he was talking about. It. He's just like, you know, he's once you get my sense of humor, um, you know, you can tell right off the bat when I'm joking. Usually it's when I suddenly start to get very serious, like, oh, oh, he's going to say, he's, he's going to tell a joke. That's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. so he, but um, people who don't get it, they say, oh my God, he just said that. I was like, no, it was a joke. No, 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 you were serious. It, it's called a dry wit. It's called a very dry wit. Right. It's called right. unnecessarily dry. It's called dry to the point of being really <laughs> stupid. Um, so I, I got to be a little careful with the jokes, but. No, actually, I think that this is a reasonably successful um, test. I've figured out some parts of the interface that I thought would work well and didn't. 
I got other parts of the interface mm -hmm. working better, and I also know now how to identify problems a little faster. And hopefully next time we won't be doing it under uh, quite as much pressure, and we can test it another hour before we actually go live. Yeah. But, um, well, why don't we uh, why don't we end the uh, stream here? Because I don't think there's much else going to be going on. And uh, why don't you and I talk a little bit, you know, behind the scenes and uh, go from there? All right. Well, let me. Um, Oh yeah, I closed the uh, control box, and of course the uh, the other thing is, yeah. Of course, <laughs> right. Oh, who's giving you a hard time now? Someone's giving me a hard time. I'm 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 chuckling at you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well. So here's the here's the thing. So the we've got the um where the 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 stream outro um was being revamped also. So we don't actually have a stream outro. All we have is this, uh, the uh, stream intro. So I'm probably just going to bail into the stream intro. <laughs> um, so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go into that and um, uh, give it Are a minute. Are you minute. sure our outro tonight shouldn't just be, hey, goodbye? <laughs> well, at a minimum, hey, listen, if it's that, it'll be more legal than our intro was. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, audio jungle. <laughs> yeah, audio jungle. That was it. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, good. Professionalism. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That's us. That's us. Yep, exactly. All right. Well, uh, thank you all very much for uh, coming in on our, on our first night. I think that it was uh, an interesting night. And um, I think it was a good, a good, decent story to to start with. I look forward to seeing you guys on our scheduled show tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and um, it's going to be uh, uh, the uh, cancel and outrage culture. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. So thank you all very much, and I will see you soon. Bye bye. Oh, I guess graphics are ninety five percent of why people show up. All right, let me uh, <laughs> call you back in a in a minute. All right, go ahead. All right, bye. bye.